scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Word of God is a seed containing the very life of God. It is His agent of transformation. As you receive these words in your heart with faith, that life is released into your spirit and your life receives a supernatural lifting. Join Apostle Joshua Selman as he brings you God's words with simplicity and power. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Father, we give you all the praise. Tonight we declare that you are God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and thank Him. Lord, we glorify you. Let the name of the Lord be glorified. Let the name of the Lord be lifted. In the name of Jesus. I'd like you to pray one prayer and say, Father, grant me understanding tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The entrance of thy word giveth light. And even understanding unto the simple. Bring understanding, O God. Shela parakato si kata priyata katosh. We receive understanding. We receive understanding in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, our eyes are on you tonight. You are the custodian of all wisdom spirit of the living god we thank you we are gathered tonight because we believe in you we are gathered tonight to hear you speak we ask oh god that you speak cause our ears cause our spirits to hear we decree and declare that we are not rebels to your word let it come let it produce results in lives in the name of jesus hallelujah god bless you please be seated we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Praise the Lord. I'd like to welcome all those connecting with us from several parts of the world. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. For those of us who are here, the Lord honor you in the name of Jesus. The word of God will make us mighty in the name of Jesus Christ. 
let me start tonight by prophesying to the worship team in the name of jesus may your songs have wings may they go to the nations in the name of jesus let there be greater portals open for you to have understanding you will bring the songs of the spirit and in the name of jesus christ your songs will be limitless the grace that multiplies our teachings around the world that same grace will take your songs beyond your borders i pray that you will hear these songs in the night i pray that you will not belittle yourself may every one of you be great and mighty in the name of jesus god bless you please be seated extraordinary results part two please open your spirit to hear what i'll be teaching you tonight i came with a very heavy burden in my heart and um i trust that god will grant us grace we began to share last week how that results are not a mistake results are not a coincidence every time you see results in the life of a person whether spiritual results whether financial results whether intellectual results they are governed by laws one of the things that we have taught again and again in this house is after an encounter with the person of god the next thing you have to understand are the principles that govern this kingdom that we live in are we together the same way there are physical laws in our world and they are all responsible for different dimensions of results there is gravity there there's friction there are all kinds of forces at work whether you acknowledge their presence or not they are still at work the same way we have physical laws that's the same way we have spiritual laws and these laws are responsible for certain outcomes that we desire praise the lord one of the keys for productivity and results in this kingdom is to be able to connect your desires the spiritual laws that are responsible for the result you see most of us are aware of the existence of these principles but we do not know which one is responsible for what result so we try them at random hoping and my assignment is to be able to guide your understanding that with accuracy and certainty and conviction you know what spiritual principle is responsible for what outcome are we together now and we started um, last week by talking about a few prices that we must pay I told us how that in the kingdom we receive by grace but then the Bible says it is true faith by grace available true faith becomes your experience anything that is not available by grace cannot become your testimony cannot be part of your life the grace of god is not just saving grace the grace of god available in the kingdom that can only be provided for by christ is called grace now your faith is a summation of all the principles that you engage in that helps you to make that that has been available in christ to become your experience today salvation is by grace your faith makes it your experience healing is by grace your faith makes it your experience prosperity is by grace your faith makes it your experience so grace alone without engaging faith just leaves realities as potentials your life will never become that experience engaging these laws are a contribution your own alignment with god to make sure that these truths become your reality and i began to share with us a few things i've not found one person in my life who does not want to succeed now others may not admit others are outspoken about being successful others are religious about it but the truth about it is that every human being on earth of the 7.2 billion people you ask the arm robber why he's stealing he tells you he wants to succeed correct ask someone in the hospital why they don't want to die they believe that they have a future and they are, there's so much they want to do with their lives and i'm teaching us this because i do not want us to waste our time shadow boxing trying to find meaning and relevance life was not designed to be lived by guesswork you don't have that much time to guess you have to walk through life with a level of exactness and certainty 
If you believe that, say amen. amen. The first price we discussed last week, just a quick recap, is the price of knowing God. Daniel 11 verse 32, the B part. It says, but the people that do know their God, the first price any believer has to pay is the price for an encounter with God. Not just principles. Principles are only useful when there is an encounter with a person. Take note. When you begin to pursue principles and mysteries and you do not have an encounter with God, it will be vain babblings. It will make you arrogant and eventually your results will destroy you. It is your encounter with the person of the Christ through the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that makes every other result you get relevant. There are people who become rich and leave God. There are people who become influential and leave God. That's because they had access to principles but they skipped the place of encounter. So the starting point of any kind of result and that which will last is an encounter. Everybody say an encounter. You must pay the price to know God. Please get the teaching, last week's teaching. I don't want to go over it again. Knowing God requires time. Knowing God requires passion. Knowing God requires prioritizing him above all things. Carnality is not having money. Carnality is not having materials. Carnality is an attachment. The attachment you have a poor person can be carnal you've just not had enough physical materials to help you demonstrate the carnality are we together now and um, there are many many carnal people in the body of Christ attached to things possessions money cars material things here and there and um, you must pay the price to know God number two is the price of genuine submission to authority I taught us about that and I'm glad that many people are beginning to understand this there is an imbalance of authority there is an imbalance of submission that has been taught for many years in the body of Christ is the imbalance of usurping people's rights and making men demigods that's an error is unscriptural there is a place for submission and I took out time to explain to us that the purpose of authority is for protection, provision, and promotion. Nobody promotes himself. Is that true? And um, I know we are all in Christ, but the election of grace has separated people into strata. You violate God's system of blessing, you will pay for it. Everybody has access to the Christ, but God has designed that there is a system by which men receive results one of it is authority so there is an imbalance of authority where people do not have rights again they don't have brains men of God become the gods of people they tell you when to eat they tell you when to have another child they tell you no 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 all that is rubbish it's just the insecurity of men on rampage so they spiritualize it and carve out a group of people that can find victims of their insecurities that's in balance praise the lord paul said follow me as i follow christ in other words if at any point you don't find me following christ do not follow me i want us to be very very clear about the concept of authority there are many insecure men and women of god well-meaning but they carry their complexes from poor backgrounds they get filled with the holy spirit and you know africa is a very loyal continent we are loyal to men of god we are loyal to pastors and churches and sometimes it is that loyalty that has become the unbecoming of people they were doing well until a man came into their life in the name of fatherhood and mentorship and wrecked and destroyed their life they made people to leave jobs when they shouldn't leave jobs. They made people to not take drugs when they should take drugs. They made people to all kinds of things and destroy people's lives. Separated husbands and wives when they have no business separating because of some kinds of hilarious vision. So we must be careful. Submission is important. Authority is important. So that's one side of the imbalance. The other side of the imbalance is those who uh, in a bit to address what i just explained now tell people there's no such thing as authority everybody can access god no you fight the body of christ you lose there is a system with which the church was built are we together the bible tells us that the church was built like a building he said every house is built by some man then he says god is the builder of all our work with god is based on relationship 
but kingdom advancement is based on covenant and i've explained it to us the way that god operates on earth is that all his multifaceted dimensions are resident within individuals they become the portals through which the generation experiences that dimension of god so prosperity for instance god finds a man opens his understanding to an unusual dimension of god in that area and then makes that man a symbol a portrait a representation of that possibility so that every other man on earth who must enter that dimension must do it in alignment to both god and that system he has set up you will never enter that that you may believe in god but if you do not believe in what that individual represents and submit to it, you will never enter that dimension. No man will work greatly in the healing ministry insulting Benny Hinn. No man will work greatly in prosperity and faith insulting Kenneth Copeland. Even if you believe you have more revelation than him, he's more than a human being. He's a system that communicates a dimension of God's reality. The Bible is full of mysteries and... Um, I wish I had time. I don't want to go back to walk all of those. Remember, there was a time when the nation of Israel wanted to fight war. They were fighting war. And Moses, these guys had their swords. But behind the scene, there was a man who was lifting his rod. Is that true? The Bible says, as he lifted the rod, although the people were the ones doing the physical fighting, but the results were controlled by one man's hand now watch this the bible says a time came when moses hand was getting weak the wisest thing to do is to say sir you are an elder just sit down let me help you is that not true the wisest thing to do is to help the man not everything can be done by everybody ask saul why he lost his throne he said what is there somewhere we can't be waiting for you are you so special give me the knife and when samuel came he said saul what have you done he said you would have allowed me come god would have preserved your throne forever but now you have done foolishly today by this foolish act violating rankings in the spirit your throne is taken from you authority is real not everybody you see is a pure human being i don't know how to make you believe this but it's true For this cause, many are weak, many are sick. People's pride has stopped them from entering simple, cheap victories because of their refusal to understand authority. It's not human worship. There are some battles that are needless if you fight them. If you fight those, if you ever fight those battles, it's because you are not wise. Are we together? Yes. Truly speaking, there are some battles that are products of foolishness. Moses' hand began to go down. The Bible never said their swords stopped being sharp. Just because a man's hand was going down, they started defeating them. And they said, look, whatever we would do to support your position for the sake of our victory, we'll do it. I know what many people in our generation will do. Moses, you are not the only one God is talking to. Please help me with that rod, Jerry, and hold it and watch the rod kill you first. It looks simple until you see what is happening in the spirit. A man can say, God prosper. You say, What is there? Is it not just positive conversion? You too, God prospers you, and then you don't see any result. Hmm. The law of authority all the blessings of god come through the scriptural chain of authority it is from aaron's head down to his beard then it goes down to his skirt praise the lord when authority is done properly it produces wonders when there is any violation of it whether on the part of the supposed spiritual father or on the part of those who submit to that grace there will always be problem proximity is not submission availability hanging around a grace is not genuine submission submission is not weakness please listen understand this it is not a proof of weakness only a foolish man of god will take advantage of people because of their submission to his grace are we together the law of authority learn it use it command cheap victories in your life it's not idolatry 
when it is done within the confines of scripture it is not idolatry number three we have a lot to do today the third price that we must pay to produce extraordinary results is the price of mental transformation the price of mental transformation numbers chapter 13 please help us media it's a long reading from verse 25 the price of mental transformation the sacrifice of upgrading your paradigm the laborious sacrifice through the agency of the word and every other material whose thoughts are consistent with the word take note first the word of god scripture and then every other material intellectual material whose thought line is consistent with the word of god qualifies to be an instrument of mental transformation there are many believers who study the bible but they do not study the works of people who love god and who have paid the price to access these laws listen let me tell you this the law of the mind is an irrefutable principle if you must command results no matter how spiritual you are your life will eventually be a reflection of your understanding your life your physical environment will inevitably be a reflection of your understanding may not happen immediately but over a given period of time it is safe to say your experience the sum total of your experiences spiritually financially intellectually sociologically is a reflection of both your paradigm and your understanding if you lack money forever it is because there is an understanding you do not have if you are fighting with everybody forever there is an understanding you do not have are we together there can be momentary failures and setbacks agreed but when over a long period of time your experiences are the same is proof that your mindset is delivering that result say amen numbers chapter 13 we are reading from verse 25 to 33 this was the encounter of moses and the 12 spies listen and they returned from searching the land after 40 days we are reading to 33 and they went and came to moses these are the people now and aaron and to the congregation of the children of israel unto the wilderness of paran to kadesh and brought back word to them listen and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land and they told them and said we came unto the land whither thou sentest us and surely it floweth with milk and honey and this is an evidence this is the fruit of it nevertheless listen this is a mindset speaking now everyone's communication is a window into your understanding you can fake it for a while but with time you will speak your true convictions nevertheless this is a faulty mindset interrupting the word of god the people that dwelleth in the land and the cities are walled and are very great and moreover we saw the children of anak there the amalekites dwell in the land of the south the hittites and the jebusites and the amorites dwell in the mountains and the canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of jordan and caleb said kai keep quiet what is all this all you people are just bringing negative was i not there with you we saw it we just brought the fruits and caleb stilled the people before moses and said moses as far as i'm concerned this is doable let us go up at once and possess it why for we are well able someone prophesied to yourself i am well able say it again i am well able he said we are able to overcome in other words i'm not refusing it's a challenge he didn't say i'm able to go through it no you don't deny the real boy say we are able there is capacity within us to bring those giants down hallelujah this is the power of a transformed mind a man sits down and prophesies doom to himself because of his mindset i can't make it i am from kaduna state i am from plateau state i am from benway i am from kogi people from our family don't rise is a reflection of your understanding 31 but the men that were up with him said we be not able to go against the people why for they are they've not fought oh. 
they, are, they fought in their minds and were defeated already the result of their defeat was that for we they are stronger than we and they brought up an evil report listen now what kind of report poor thinking will always make a man communicate what god calls an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of israel saying the land though we have gone through gone to search it a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature the last verse and there we saw the giants the sons of anak which come of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight the anakims never say hey grasshopper the people call themselves grasshoppers the same way you call yourself um, a weak failure the same way you call yourself all kinds of things there is a price to pay to produce extraordinary results let me tell you nobody is born with a transformed mind transformation is a spiritual investment in case you see certain people confident and commanding results again and again it is nobody is transformed by default ladies and gentlemen it is the labor dimension of the world that brings us to a point where we adjust our understanding we've done many teachings aimed at building our mindsets and our understanding have taught us how paradigms are formed the first way paradigms are formed are through our cultural backgrounds we come from different cultures and then our environmental conditioning we've lived among people who have been poor and broke we have lived among people who have little or no respect for spiritual things we have lived among people who do not value the power of the word of god and unconsciously we have imbibed their way of life and their way of thinking as a paradigm a set of belief a plane of interpreting things your reality is interpreted by your perspective and if you do not allow the word of god alter your perspective you will fail in life in a way that you cannot imagine listen i don't care what physical effort you are exerting your life will eventually be a reflection of your mindset there are many people who have failed before they started it was very clear from their mindset and their thinking that they were not going to make it so they were not surprised when they failed it was just a confirmation of a defeat that had been in their minds are we together we were like grasshoppers so they call themselves the bible tells us how to think philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 it says finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise do what thinking and wishing are two different things wishing is just mesmerizing on a result that you will never happen in your life but thinking is constructing your mind your understanding many people do not think well they don't even think at all and if they do they think on negative things listen to me much more than your physical activity focus on making sure that your mindset has been constructed to produce victory are we together you were insulted growing up you probably were abused growing up and it put something in your mind about men and you keep saying every man is a devil every man is no not every man is a devil in your world and based on your experience all the people you have encountered are bad but why don't you expand your horizon how about prosperity there are so many people when you tell them will you prosper they say when i read what <laughs> when i read what because a society has programmed your mind that your wealth is entirely dependent on just what you studied so people make they go out of their way to do malpractice because they hope that by so doing it will give them an edge correct what do you believe about yourself what do you believe about god what do you believe about life you've heard me say it again and again 
it never ceases to amaze me those who hang themselves or, co or commit suicide i don't think i hate myself that much ah, i understand quarreling myself but to hang yourself is um is is quite you must be assisted by a spirit you become a reflection a physical reflection of your most dominant thoughts the thoughts that construct your understanding eventually become your life bring me someone who is as weak and beggarly and as villager as anything provided that person's heart is open to receive and learn give me six months with that person of thorough upgrading of his mind I'm not talking of business I'm not talking of whatever just allow me to change and alter that person's mind if I never see that person in my life again I can tell you staking my life that that person will be a success regardless of what his life is at that moment now here's the reverse accumulate a lot of physical things to hide the true state of your mind your understanding will take them away from your life until you look like what you believe are we together now let's do a little experiment look up don't feel bad how many of you have noticed that certain financial blessings only come at certain levels you never cross 30,000 mark if somebody blesses you with 200,000 it will finish and return back to that range it, your understanding pegged you like the thermostat of an ion you know how an ion is you program it to be this hot when it gets there what happens it breaks that's it there are people who will never cross hundred thousand give them one million they will laugh only for one week that money the, the behavioral patterns that come from faulty thinking will alter their behavior and make them act in a way a manner that reduces them back to the mindset of those who are hundred thousand allocators so it's not enough to just claim and say i'm a millionaire there is an understanding that resonates with that level of living and you must upgrade in your mind it's like resonance in physics remember those who are science-based there's something called resonance in physics that when you hit a tuning fork is that true at a particular frequency every other object within that environment that is the same frequency without touching it starts resonating that's how it is every result you have in the spirit has a spiritual frequency mental level that calls it when you want a result that is higher than your level of thinking it cannot resonate to it so your mindset must rise let me tell you when it gets there it will come in a heartbeat forget about the physical activities that act themselves to manifest it in your life that's that's little issue but we focus on who will bless me and how it will come that's that's not the issue just settle it in your mind you have programmed yourself truly to be successful when you want to know the true secret behind a man's result don't look at the physical result understudy the understanding of that man you see that you get blessed from successful people not just by benefiting from the result of their success unfortunately that's what mediocres do they are obsessed by the result the tie the shoe the watch the car the um, anointing the miracles wheelchair no there is an understanding that helps that man to partner with the holy spirit so that that kind of result be produced when you have that construction then you are ready for victory the price of mental transformation are you still living like your yesterday and expecting tomorrow's result it doesn't work that way sir you will never never be able to receive results at the mental state that brought the challenge that has pegged you let me tell you what challenges are challenges are a proof that your current level of understanding has reached its expiry level the moment you are confronted with an, a supposedly unsurmountable challenge is a proof to you i teach the school of ministry students that challenges are a letter from your future to you saying i am there and i am real but your mental state now cannot take you there challenges are a letter from your future to you saying i exist i am real but you will not arrive there with your current level of understanding i am passionate about god exposing my area of ignorance it doesn't embarrass me some of us are so 
egocentric that the moment you are aware that there is need for upgrade in an area it embarrasses us you must be flexible enough to admit that where i am is a reflection of something i do not know are we together do you believe this apostle i don't have friends everybody hates me it's a lie there is something about your understanding that keeps creating that reality apostle money comes and it disappears yes there can be demonic issues but the demons don't just come and act foolishly they act upon a mindset that can host them the day your mindset becomes hostile to their presence that's the day you break free that's why true deliverance after casting out the demons there must be a reconstruction of your understanding to make your environment no longer conducive for the activity of demon space it is almost vain to lay hands and cast out demons and leave the same mindset that brought them you are only recycling a journey of endless suffering that's why when demons find out that a particular man of god does not have intelligence enough to holistically secure people's deliverance the demons are in a hurry to leave they mock you before you raise your hand they go knowing that their access point is still there the door is open are we together something about your thinking is responsible for your limitation there is a way africa thinks we have subsistent thinking there is a way men of god think that don't give them results there is a way they think that they get results please every time you see a man of god a system a businessman whatever commanding results don't enjoy the flamboyancy of the physical results but if you really want to receive you must be able to labor to buy into their understanding so the bible says this let this mind permit this mind philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 permit this mindset this thinking this construction this set of understanding to be in you that was also in christ jesus and then things will respond to you the same way they responded to jesus born around a manger still didn't matter upgraded his mind 30 years he was to live 33 and a half years and he spent over 90 percent of his life committing to development and in three years he did something that through eternity will not recover from listen listen hear this advice never be in a rush to manifest physical results in your life don't be in a rush to start business someone met me one time and said sir what the way you are looking at me i don't know what i meant prophetically or physically he said what business do you think i can do i said none you will fail in every business you do no matter how simple it is and this is the reason it's not because you are lazy it is because you do not get the understanding of a prosperous person by default sincerity is one of the seed for greatness so you may be sincere it's like someone who is very sincere wants to transport you from one place to the other but cannot drive will his sincerity take you there as well-meaning as that person is it's not if you die it's when that car will capsize don't labor to show physical results you try to buy a shoe of hundred thousand to make a statement I guarantee you your carelessness and your wrong thinking is going to spoil that shoe you'll be surprised that you never kick it on a wall but in one month the shoe will open up something about your wrong belief will mount pressure on that state your mind is saying it's a lie your physical realm is not agreeing with your mental realm something will happen I've given you an analogy again and again take a poor person take someone who is one of the least workers in any business organization or any company put him in the director's office for two weeks don't tell him anything just put him there and say you have unlimited access to this office do you know what you will do number one he's going to steal are you seeing the mindset he will steal because he knows for sure that he's only there for a short time number two he will not clean and arrange the place what can i get so things the mediocre what can i get not what can i give he will sit down watch television drink all the juice in the fridge snap himself take selfies and then try to what can i steal oh there's one carton of water if i take five nobody will know that's a mediocre that's the reason why he will remain where he is 
in two weeks he would turn that office into his mindset but take a great man to a room that is messy cobwebs everywhere and he sits down his mindset refuses and say no this is not you whoever has your mindset should sweep the room and so he sweeps the room whoever has the mindset should clean the room in five days you come back and see the same room no cobwebs he would have bought a rock to put there as at the time he was deciding he didn't have money but his mindset told him how it will come is the last the most important thing is to plan there is power when you set goals this is a renewed mind a poor man who say i beg this nigeria i don't have any father anywhere and remain there after one year he has not been able to buy a rock something about our understanding is responsible for the way we are is that true i look at myself and i look at the dimensions god wants to take me and i look at many things i do not know that is responsible for my current level of results and so I continue to search, find out. If I know what Folorun Shah Lakija knows, then I will be a billionaire in dollars. Correct? Listen, respect results. Don't trivialize results. Results are not luck, especially predictable results. Predictable result. Time is a revealer of the accuracy of your convictions. When you see a result that is sustained, it was based on laws. It wasn't based on magic i can dash you one million but you cannot become a millionaire for five years by mistake no sir it's a lie i can lay hands on you temporarily and you can even lay hands on someone the wheelchair and leave the person but brothers and sisters you will not organize crusades for two years non-stop when intrinsically you have not received that grace the bible never said the donkey talked forever he talked for a moment and his mouth was shut the Bible never said the rod bordered forever. Psalm 78 verse 41. A scripture that has become a national anthem in this place. It said, but they limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. They were in the wilderness and they limited Him. Can God make a way? Can God make a way? Can God make a way? The Bible says they limited him. As mighty as God is, brothers and sisters, we can limit him. Through our understanding, we can limit him. Someone met me one time and said, Apostle, God doesn't want to encourage me to love. I said, what's the meaning of that? He said, I've told God I want to buy a Dick's Bible. I've told God I don't even want clothes for myself. Just spiritual items, messages, anointing oil, all these kind of things. And God, nobody is even help. And I said, show me the paper where you wrote them down. Show me the scripture you, at, you, you put on them. And he said, no, I don't have anything. I said, so if I were God, I would do the same thing. Show me the paper. Where have you gone to the market? To find out how much anointing oil is that's a proof of faith it's a sign that you know it will come faith is conviction and the action you take based on that conviction are we together yes let me tell you how to know people don't walk by faith they are vague in their expectations vagueness is a sign you are not sure the result will come the Bible says give us he told you who to give number two he says this day when what our daily bread give us this day our daily bread specificity is very important in manifesting faith so that when the result comes you are sure that this is what I released my faith for is God speaking to us When you package your physical environment without the requisite mental upgrade and transformation, you have only flattered yourself. It's like throwing your money in a basket because everything will disappear. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen, especially for we who are young. I know that we live in a society that mounts pressure on a gentleman and a lady to show. Uh -uh, you finished school four years ago till now. You can't even buy a nice jean and so we go out of our way to try to paint our physical world to look like a reality that we have upgraded ourselves into and we keep you notice that you keep rising up 
and falling rising up and falling your physic you try to fake it your mindset brings you back that's what happened to many of our loved ones I've told people why fake something that can be real you don't have to fake it when it can be real brothers and sisters hear me you may be in a small one room right now no carpet no recharge card no nothing you are using a, a simple phone that you don't even know the name there's no name on it you just bought it somewhere don't allow that disturb you if you can take the word of god the beautiful thing about your mind is that it's not limited by time and space continue to upgrade yourself in the name of jesus i may have gary today but i will feed nations and you study the word of god and it's constructing your mind there is he that stirred and yet increases. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Ah, so an attachment for things is why money doesn't come. You write it in the name of Jesus. I have no attachment to things. When God brings them, money is a slave and a servant, never to become a God and a master. I am a giver. And then you study again. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that he having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So it's God that can make all grace abound. That means I don't need to worry about how the results will happen. It is God's office that allocating how the physical results will manifest. Are we together? You begin to study. You see. The Bible says love never fails. That means if there is anything that is failing in my life. When I add love to it. I can turn the results around. So you construct your mindset. Let me tell you the first thing that will happen to you when your mind begins to transform. Your environment will start fighting you because immediately your friends and your environment, your thinking will start making you act in a physical way that will make them say, what are, are you the only one who is a Christian? What is all these things? We are, we are talking about all of this thing. I beg, man must walk. And he said, no, sorry, I don't speak like that again. With all due respect, something is happening to me. He said, eh, hey, you better finish all that grammar and let's come and soak Gary they are trying to pull you back say the devil is a liar say it again and they'll pull you back and say it's true let me go back Jerry. this coin only I think you are just talking like fools even God knows why well, will I lie I'm like that I'm, I'm not and you start complaining and reprogram yourself back to your current state while people are watching football, you buy a book, 500 naira, and you sit down. When people are hilariously celebrating birthdays when they don't have any money, God just opens a door, 10,000 naira, and you just say, Ah, my birthday is tomorrow. Kai, will I die like that? Let me enjoy myself. Are we together? Your birthday clothes, 8,000. Whatever else you buy, you cook, and the money has finished. And you feel good about that day and continue suffering. Or someone can say, this is my birthday. I may not be a millionaire overnight, but let me make it the last birthday. When the, by this time, one year, I should at least be able to have options for the food I eat. We don't make that decision. We don't study. What are you doing? I'm browsing something. What, who is that? Um, somebody he I mean very powerful is a wonderful Christian and he's speaking minded of great people say I beg I want to watch one film it just came out am, am I mocking movies no please don't don't misunderstand me but I'm saying if you continue to flatter yourself and not commit yourself to personal development you will never be great I was talking with a dear friend today and I was telling them, gone are the days where people think ministers are daft people. They are just people who manipulate the minds of people. Ministers are very intelligent people. It takes a lot of intelligence alongside spirituality to be able to communicate thoughts. I was coming with one of the protocol persons and when we were coming, I was asking him what he's doing now and he said he wanted to go into public speaking. And I said, wow. I said, really, everybody's a public speaker. The moment you are a leader in any field, you are a public speaker. Public speaking is all about communicating thoughts. It takes intelligence, it takes psychology, it takes leadership, it takes content. Not just that God sent you and said, go to America. 
go to um, whatever and then you go and stand and say well the most important thing is the miracle that will happen right now don't worry well, if you like be sleeping while I'm talking you will soon suspect you and say you are a herbalist because the foundation upon which the power comes you see our incompetence raises the propensity for suspicion especially where you know that there is the lavish anointing of God upon your life you must have both a sound word and intellectual balance so that as you are communicating the word of God there is a, a synergy with your result anybody that listens knows that no 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 this person has paid his price I will be silly believing that he should not be at this level of results say in the name of Jesus I receive grace to pay the price of mental transformation I buy the truth and I sell it not hallelujah one way we transit mentally is to find out those who are current reflections of our aspirations and then to buy into their thinking and their paradigms here's how the Bible puts it it says follow them so not everybody is worthy of being followed it says honor all men but you can't follow all men listen there is this African trado African mentality of loyalty to people ideas and systems that are obsolete and do not have capacity to make you great listen the Bible says and David served his generation every generation has a curriculum of understanding you must understand the generation with which you are sent to minister to and be able to construct your mind to understand their needs and how best to communicate it I'm sent to minister to all men but I always tell people that the age range of my influence and my impact is 15 to 50 if you are within the range age range of 15 to 50 you are within my generation of influence now that does not mean people like our daddy and our elderly ones here i will bless you but you will be surprised that bishop oyedeko and papa adeboye will be more useful to them than a young man like me is that true because they grew with that generation if you're a ministry here and people tell you are ministering to young people you better rejoice and don't think it's an embarrassment because that means you'll be ministry for a long time if you're a ministry and every of your member is at least 60 65 i have a very sad news for you you are not going to last because um those people are at the level of their life where they're interested in legacy don't tell them speak well no not at that age my brother they are writing books and mentoring another generation we laugh at those in children's ministry and say are ah, you as big as you are those children in 20 years will become leaders now in the world we have young people i foresee times when in the next 10 15 years you will have presidents in their 20s young people whose minds are malleable and flexible the world has grown enough to discern results more than biological age when you have results they allow you look at france has already set the pace now with their prime minister other nations will follow through a time will come when if you are not competent early you will join a queue that will never reach your turn forever i want you to believe what i'm saying it is true it is good that a man bears his yoke in his youth pay the price now pay the price now you may be laughed at now but pay the price are we blessed change your perception change your paradigm don't focus on just starting business as wonderful as that is or getting a job as wonderful as that is pay the price pay the price to build your mind then your job i have said it again and again i'm not necessarily talking about money but you don't make money off business you make money off your understanding you don't become great off the physical things you do you become great off your understanding may the lord cause us to be men and women of great understanding in the name of jesus you've heard me say it again and again that we will all be great but the greater part of the news is that we will all know ourselves you will see it happen yes you will see it happen we may not look like it now the bible says now are we the sons of god it says and it doth not yet appear 
until you see the quality of children that our generation will produce filled with the holy ghost from age two why because a healthy mindset is the head of that family loving god because you understand the principles that at age 60 you look 30 because both the joy and the peace and the prosperity of the lord together have constructed and extended your life in quietness and peace that you will be called Dula and Hefziba, unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life. And people ask you, how are you doing it? You say, I can reproduce it again and again. It was not luck. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, help me. Grant me grace to be passionate about transforming my understanding. Stop complaining about the physical results you do not see. Brothers and sisters, that should be the least of your concern. Lord, deliver me from a fake life. Are we praying? Deliver me from a life that tries to show I am there when I am not there. I receive the patience. I receive the patience. I know that I'm not going to become a millionaire overnight. I will not become anointed overnight. I receive the patience to carefully build my understanding. Lift your voice and pray. There is an understanding that will make me an exceptional man of God. There is an understanding that will make me an exceptional wife, exceptional husband, exceptional career person, exceptional businessman, an exceptional politician. I focus on mental transformation. I pay attention to look for men and women who are a reflection of my desire. Your future is somebody's experience today. And the Bible instructs that we are transformed by the word of God. But again, by following them who through faith and understanding, allowing our minds to rise above our cultural limitations, everything they have told you growing up, you will never be great. You are poor. You are small. You are a non-entity. You probably have failed again and again in life to a point where you do not believe that there is such a possibility for favor. Something has told you you will never be a good wife. You will never be a good husband. It could be friends, backgrounds. I'd like you to pray and say, I cast down every imagination and every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. I bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. I decree and declare that I am well able, 10 times better. My life has no limitations. My only limitation is the voice of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I am limitless. Hallelujah. Listen, don't listen to what I'm saying and think I'm just talking nonsense. If you don't believe what I'm telling you, you'll fail in life. Yes, you will. And you will live an angry and resentful life. Our society is full of very angry people. Do you know, one of the reasons why people are angry is not because of their challenges, it's because of their understanding and their interpretation of it. The Bible says to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in what? If you rejoice in your certificate, one day it will make you angry, the day you are not promoted. If you rejoice just in your husband alone, your wife alone, your child, your car, your business, all those things, they fluctuate. But it says rejoice in a constant factor called the Lord and again I say rejoice and your joy will never have a reason to bend when when you see people happy and making merriment and rejoicing sometimes they say, ah, these people are lucky if you know what those people are going through half it may kill you but they have made up their minds that their joy is not defined by the things around them they understand that joy is a fetcher in the realm of the spirit you use it to draw from the wells of salvation it's not circumstances that make, the bible says the joy of the lord is your strength meaning when i lose joy i lose strength and satan understands this so he will orchestrate it i thought you said you will enter a relationship by january you even open your mouth and told people now it's november oh, my sister and you just say, hey, how about God? There are many men in Koinonia now. Won't they see me? You are already responding to it. But the joy of the Lord. Oh, Lord, I give you praise. I thank you. Where is the God that brought the servant of Isaac to come and meet Rebecca? That same God will connect me. Lord, I give you praise. Before the arrival of the man, I continue working on myself to become a woman of virtue. That the day that gentleman sees me, he will never be able to sleep again. Good preparation. What do you do while waiting for your miracle? 
among many things praise and prepare hmm. praise and prepare is God blessing us yes you will never and I say it with all humility you never see me putting my hand on my chin and say hi life he said, why now? He said, Nigeria, are you not seeing what is happening? I choose to be joyful. I choose to make merry. In my world, there is absolute peace. The world you talk about is the one your mindset created. Oh. In my world, there is peace and love and joy. Apostle, are you see what is going on in this country? I know, but I know that there is a God in heaven. He was not dethroned. He's alive. Hallelujah, he's alive. Apostle, are you hearing that terrorists are entering churches and bombing everywhere? Oh, I understand that as the mountains surround Jerusalem, there is a construction. I am happy. Joy is a defense. You plant fear and plant hatred and before you know it, what you used to believe, you now stop it and throw it away. No. Be joyful. Prophesy to your neighbor. Say, be joyful. Say to another, remain joyful. Amen. When two people are fighting, the first thing that disappears is laughter. So when you cannot laugh and you are happy before God, something is wrong. Oh God, I'm here again. Abba, you say, better come and answer me. What is all this thing I'm saying? Is it that you are not seeing my own prayer request? Or is it that Apostle Son is not touching my own? What is all this? I keep writing this thing. And when you, the devil says, please continue. I, I beg you, continue. You frustrate Satan when you look at your challenges and rejoice before them. He says, what then do I do? It's a sign you are not living in the flesh. Are we together? You get up in the morning and there's no food. And you can have a sarcastic roommate or neighbor who says, Pastor, Gary has finished though. They say it with sarcasm. Are, are you, do you have people like that around your life? Yes. They will say it to me, please, prosperity confessor Gary has finished there is soup but no Gary I tell God there is already soup just help us with Gary they try to mock you but do you know mockery is a mystery every time listen every time men are mocking you it's a sign something has left heaven and Satan is trying to use men to stop it read your Bible every time they mocked men when the mockery was at the apex the result was almost arriving When we started out in ministry, many people mocked and said nonsense and said all kinds of things. And the Lord told me, just continue to rejoice and celebrate. And hallelujah, look what he's done. And will continue to do by his grace. Make up your mind that you are going to be a happy person. Make up your mind from today's teaching that you will be joyful. Apostle, nine o'clock, my rent must be paid. My brother, anger will not pay rent. Your your annoyance will not even add to it so you better be happy because even physically it can make some what is making you joyful like this and you say i'm smiling in the midst of the storm i say storm what storm and the person comes in tell your loved ones to be happy our generation of young people are becoming unnecessarily old because of stress you see somebody 20 years old they tell you he has bp <laughs> sir what are you thinking about saying my life I'm 20, I'm not in a relationship. Like, ah, are you joking? What in the world is this? What's, what's wrong with you? Listen to our character building series. Work on your mind. What did you watch? Which movies have you been watching that have raped away your patience? But when you see somebody rejoicing, always happy. You come back from Koinonia, I'm happy. Somebody is grumbling in the car. You just say, well, God bless you. You arrive home, you are happy. What will we eat? Well, there may not be food. And truly, sometimes it can be painful. But Lord, I give you all the praise. How long will I keep dancing? For as long as the answer comes. Let me tell you, waiting for miracles is like getting pregnant. I will never have the privilege of having that experience. But one thing I know is that I've been in the hospital many times to see the joy of giving birth to a child. For as soon as you travel, travel in joy, Brothers and sisters, the God who promised you will bring it to pass. So, yes. I have seen men celebrate the victory of trusting God. I will hold on. If I perish, I perish. If God said it, I believe him. 
Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. God is speaking to you. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, brothers and sisters, hear me encourage you tonight. Be patient with God. Be patient. Be patient with God. It didn't take you one day to build that understanding. Just continue with God. Apostle, it's been three years I've been coming for Koinonia. I can't even pay my transport. Don't worry. The word of God is working. The day the miracle will come, not even your prayer will stop it. God says it's too late. When your mindset has built it, no. A day will come. In one month, you will see cars in Koinonia. You'll be like, oh, it's a season. It's not a season. The, the, the car is being given to you now. Your colleagues are saying, my brother, won't you buy a car? Don't worry. Don't go and kill yourself trying to get loan anywhere. Just calm down. Leave the issue of loan and stay with God. Take your Okada with honor and give God praise. The day to come, it will come in a grand style. I assure you. You have only two shirts. I've noticed this is the only thing you wear. Well, I'm not ashamed of it. At least I'm not a thief. I will iron the shirt. It's faded. But I thank God you are seeing it now. I was looking at some of my photos today. So not even very... I looked at some of them and I said, Ah! God, you are faithful. What are we saying? You are so faithful. Listen. Let me give many of you a message of hope. At your level, I was worse than how you look now. So you better encourage yourself and say, if I'm at this level and I'm already smiling like this, it means when I get to a level higher than where I am, is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Number four. What's the third price? Is the price of being skillful write it down the price of being valuable the price of being skillful proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 it's become an anthem in koinonia the gift of a man and i add the gift of a man that's been identified developed and added to with excellence take note not just the gift of a man the raw material potential gift no sir it won't bring you before great men the gift of a man an ability a potential identified developed are we together now and then alongside excellence when you serve your gift with excellence the bible says it will make room hallelujah and will bring you before great men nobody celebrates potential we recognize potential but we celebrate potential that has been developed the world we live in rewards value you must be able to rise to a point where you provide value that is needed and useful not value that you know your value must be needed and useful the kingdom of god is built upon a reward system listen carefully the kingdom of god is built on a reward system money being only one of the rewards is is a reward for being valuable are we together now very important proverbs chapter 13 verse 15 it says good understanding procures favor good understanding gives favor good understanding is like a pregnant woman when she gives birth the name of her child is favor it says but the way of the transgressor a transgressor is not a sinner the way of a transgressor is hard hardship has a formula you can predict it good understanding give it favor but the way of transgressors is what you must be skillful nobody stays close to me and refuses to be skillful you must be skillful we train the leaders in this ministry to be skillful the workers everybody you must be skillful oh i can sing wonderful 
but will Don Muen call you because of your voice? Have you worked upon yourself? What do you know about singing? The truth is that many of us, at least to an appreciable level, we have discovered areas here and there in our lives. But the challenge for many of us is the mental and physical inertia, that laziness to develop ourselves to a point where we get to a point of unconscious competence. Everybody shout it after me, say competence. Say it again, competence. Let me tell you something I've learned about competence. Competence defies age, gender, tribal, and racial um, differences and, and all of, and sentiments. I have seen people rewarded regardless of where they came from. I've seen people rewarded and blessed different fields. Listen, anything you are doing, if you do not plan to be a leader in that field, don't do it. Are we together? I will never commit my energy to anything that I will not be a leader in, whether it is ministry, whether it is business. You may start small, but your the those who are rewarded in any field are the leaders of the field. In the academia, the professor collects the highest salary. Why? Because he has been able to upgrade his mind and access value to that point where he deserves it. You may be a student or a lecturer or a staff or a worker, but if you have not risen to that level of competence, you may never have the privilege of access. Make up your mind. That I will be competent. Say it. I will be competent. Say it again. I must be competent. The law of value. Your value. When developed. Decide who pursues you. Your value. When developed. Decides who pursues you. Mike Mudok teaches that your a problem is an invitation for a reward. A problem is an invitation for a reward. Until there is a problem that you can solve, I teach our school of ministry students that you are unnecessary. Herein lies the mystery of people ignoring you. When you are not valuable, you will not be a friend to anybody. Write this down. Discover and develop problem-solving skills. Discover and develop problem-solving skills. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master brothers and sisters what we do that you call ministry is solving problems you know i've said it again and again many people get angry when men of god are blessed because many people carry they propose that understanding that men of God are lazy people who just receive free money from people. If they believe that men of God eat the church tithes and offerings and they buy cars and buy houses, it may be true for some, but it's not so for most. Men of God become blessed because they are offering value. That the value is spiritual in context. Now I am teaching you, is that true? I'm reshaping your mind. I'm adding value to you. The system of the kingdom is every time you dispense value, whether you sell it or give it free, you are authorized to be rewarded. Are we together now? You only have a problem with a man who you see blessings in his life, whether financial and otherwise, and you cannot see the value equivalent. So when I look at a billionaire like Bill Gates, I see the value equivalent. That's why we don't harass him. If I look at a criminal who is not offering any value, yet his bank account is fat, then I know that the equation does not balance. Before you ever criticize a blessed man, examine the value. Now, you may not have risen to a level of perception where you think what he's doing is valuable enough to bring reward, but it still does not matter. Everybody say, I will be valuable. Say it again, I will be valuable. 
I will be skillful. Become a master at something, Koinonia, and wave poverty goodbye. Become a master at something. If I ask you what are you a master at and you cannot tell me in one word, at best, you will wallow around the realm of mediocrity and never rise up to be something. The concept of being multi-talented is good, but those who are masters in life are known for something. There must be a skill that sets you out. Then other skills are auxiliary supporting skills that lift you. Are we together now? I'm not only a man of God. I'm many other things, but most people know me as a man of God. And they may think that's all I am and that's all that I do. There are many other aspects to my life. But there is always a skill that opens the door. That skill that brings you to the table of greatness. Then you leverage upon that. And other gifts and talents are now supporting. Is that true? Yes. You must be valuable. Now the oil in Nigeria and Africa is having a lot of problem fluctuations here and there and you can see that the whole nation is moving down that's a sign that we were never offering real value are we together if we we're offering real value the depleting of the oil prices should not affect our gdp necessarily because there should be skilled labor there should be captains of industry and people who are skilled because we are largely depending on oil there is very little reward this uh, our society pays very very little reward on meritocracy the people the those who deserve things are not rewarded but in certain parts of the world when you are competent even if they hate you that reward for sure will come to you in the name of jesus christ i pray for you may you be valuable being valuable will drive shame out of your life i tell you this being valuable the bible says study to show yourself approved it says a workman that needed not to be ashamed there is a relationship between ignorance and shame are we together there is a relationship there is a correlation between ignorance and shame those who are angry insulting every blessed person insulting those who are making things happen in society are those who have not paid the price to identify their giftings their ability their skill their talent and to invest time resources and humility to build themselves to a point where they become leaders of their field i've made up my mind that in everything i'm involved in i will be flawlessly competent it's a commitment i've made to myself and I pray that you make that commitment tonight. Never settle. The enemy of your next level is the success of your last level. Be careful. Failure does not make people fail. It stimulates them to go high. But the moment you begin to achieve results, there is a chance that you will be complacent. I will be valuable. Become a master solution provider. There is no mystery about wealth it's not a miracle it's not magic it's a system a reward system of the kingdom remember that i said your value on its own cannot bless you it must be developed everybody say developed there is a season of refining your value one gentleman sent me a text in the course of the week and said apostle i'm starting ministry i don't know exactly what to do but i believe that as i start i think i hope i'm getting what he said correctly i'm starting and i know that god will bless me just speak a word i said no sir it's not a word that moves ministry a word is over you then principles guide you as you walk obviously that gentleman will not last one month he will be angry at the neighboring churches and be angry at members who come and go and not know why they are going you hear people complain why will you come to my church and receive miracles and go away and they think the solution is just prayer man of god change my story yes god can change your story but the men of god or the men that come to your church are human beings they respond to value by the time you continue to give people informations that are needed and useful and they watch their lives transform the bible says he makes me lie down in green pastures you cannot make them lie down but you can make the pastures green then they will come and lie down they never visit green pastures when it is truly green they lie down 
information that is spiritual information that is transforming information that is needed and useful well researched and intelligently communicated backed up by the anointing of the spirit that's the kind of information that stays in today's world and in today's church any other information outside this let me tell something with members members are very funny they can say ah you know you say something that is complete rubbish and somebody stands up and says my god and while they are doing that you are so impressed with yourself and next sunday he never comes again members for you are we learning how was my preaching today ah, i mean i can't even start i mean it was it was it was strange and instead of the man of God to be honest enough to admit that car and try and go back and trust God to help, he said, You mean it? I mean, that's that's he says, Sir, this message is a, is a bestseller, and then the mem the person does not come. The moment somebody opens a church near you in a heartbeat, they will leave you because they were never loyal to you, they are loyal to themselves and their commitment to their transformation. And if you lose relevance and you cannot be a strategic contributor to their growth, spiritually and otherwise, then there's no reason why they listen to you. I've committed myself that nobody listens to me and just says this person, well, well just a daft. No, 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 no. It takes a lot of study. It takes a lot of labor, research, commitment. I'm committed to doing it. This is the key to remaining relevant. Are we together? You must be skillful. Write this scripture down. We're not turning for time's sake. Genesis 41. Um, okay, let's just look at two verses. Genesis 41. The whole scripture is from verse 14 to 46. That's the whole context from verse 14 to 46. But please give us 14 and 31. This was Joseph now. The Bible says, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Are we together? Now he began to interpret Pharaoh's dream and then to proffer a solution. And in verse 33. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out for a man. Look at a politician. After he finishes marketing himself. He said, Pharaoh, it's not like I'm saying I want to be the one. But you, since you are smart, who has committed himself to being that valuable? Look for a man who is discreet and wise. And when you find such a man, mm, when you find such a man, do what? He, sees, he programmed his own promotion. When you find that man, this is the level of result that should be given to that man. Set him over the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Everybody say mastery. It's leadership. This is called leadership. Pace setting. Trailblazing. That no, this is not competition. This is the reward that comes when you labor and stand out. Competition is in the realm of mediocre. You never see planes clashing in the air because there's enough space. It's cars that move around and have traffic for a very long time. You seldom see traffic in the air. There is space for champions. Hallelujah. Say, I'm one of them. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, For as much as God has showed you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Let's continue reading. Um, Thou shalt immediately be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. Go ahead. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee this day over all the land of Egypt. Did he ask him what tribe? Did he ask him, are you a Jew or you are this? You have solved my problem, you have reward. And Pharaoh took off his ring, the ring in his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand. And arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. Go ahead. He made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over the land of Egypt. Let's see something interesting that happened now. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee, shall no man authority through competence shall no man lift his hand or foot in the land of Egypt let's finish it two more verses and Pharaoh called Joseph's name or whatever that is that's a very long name there and he gave him to wife Asena 
free wife getting a wife becomes easy when you are valuable this is the revelation god is giving us yes you can clap getting a wife becomes almost effortless when you are valuable god programmed that way not everybody will produce the same result but there must be a token a token a sign that you are going somewhere and joseph went over the land of egypt the last verse how old was he and joseph was what this is somebody's lifetime achievement he did it at age 30. if you got born again at 30 you are behind time i teach on the graph of life you can get my message that's a sign that you need to catch up and when he stood before pharaoh king of egypt and he stood before pharaoh king of egypt and joseph went out from the presence of pharaoh and went throughout the land of egypt your competence can give god space to lift you your competence can give god space to lift you make up your mind to be valuable pray in one minute before we talk about the last point and then we'll pray father in name of jesus i receive grace to be skillful lift your voice and pray plant in me a resentment for mediocrity plant in me a resentment for average being a local champion being satisfied by little results being celebrated by mediocres competing myself with people who are not even doing anything i receive grace are you praying in the name of jesus i declare i decree and i declare go ahead and pray lord i will rise in business i set myself to become a leader in that field in the mighty name of jesus in my career i will rise to a managerial level i will not stop till i reach the apex i will not celebrate the mediocrity that has come with my background if you're a northern and pray hard pray twice in the name of jesus the mediocrity that comes with my territory i i declare that i break through it if i need to take certifications i set myself to personal development if i need to upgrade myself in knowledge i receive grace if i need seminars and training i receive grace if i need to submit myself consciously for mentorship i receive grace grace to follow those who through faith and patience i will not waste my day again i will turn my laptop to a university i will turn my android device to a university i take advantage of the information on the internet in ministry in business i find out the leaders in my field and i press to know what they knew hallelujah let me tell you how to know you are becoming a leader when somebody is following you if there is nobody following you to learn from you you are not a leader you claim you are a businessman show me those who you have raised because wisdom is justified by her children most people who follow you are people you have mentored unconsciously you were minding your business producing results and your result became too obvious to be ignored the book of mark says all men seek for thee please if you truly are part of this ministry resent mediocrity are we together resent mediocrity doesn't matter whether you graduated with a pass up graduated with whatever you can re-engineer yourself re-educate yourself then you will change your finances then you will change that talk that 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 statement they always make they will continue to jay at you and say Saul killed 1,000 David killed 10,000 competition will never leave the habitation of mediocres there is a realm you must rise to repeated mistakes are a sign that you are in ignorance before you take out any physical step again go for knowledge number four pray in the spirit for one minute thank you lord jesus your word is changing me i receive grace hallelujah the fourth price and we'll be done for today please i want to have everybody's attention because what I'm about to teach you 
is a very big secret most of you may think you know it but i want you to listen to me with your spirit listen with your heart the price of building quality relationships is the fourth price you must pay if you want to establish extraordinary results in your life the price of building quality relationships relationships are advantageous connections connections relationships are advantageous connections the easiest way to be wealthy and to be blessed in life is through relationships I've taught you this I'm repeating it so that you will understand the easiest way to be blessed in life brothers and sisters is through relationship relationships are powerful relationships are irrefutable there is no champion without quality relationships relationships are currencies they can buy anything money can buy anything money can buy relationships can buy it the only reason why money is useful is because there is a human being at the other end to collect it that human being can choose to say my relationship has paid for it i've said it again if you use money to pay for everything in life you are not working in wisdom now money is only one of many currencies relationship being the highest at the cadre second only to godliness and your spiritual connection let me tell you something of all the currencies that men used to purchase results in life physical money notes currencies is the least of them there are seven currencies i hope that by god's grace i'll teach it next year seven currencies we use to purchase results in life everything in life is bought it's just that money is not the only currency relationship is a priceless currency higher than gold higher than the dollar lend this god called abraham alone and lot who was related went with him that was the only thing lot did and he became stupendously wealthy relationships can determine the next course of your results and lack of it can keep you stagnated almost for a lifetime please i want you to learn this the presence of a quality relationship in your life can define the next level of your success lack of it can stagnate you sometimes even for a lifetime you are one quality relationship underline quality you are one quality relationship away from your next level of results believe me on this you are one quality relationship away from the next level of your result you know all of this already my emphasis is not just to talk about the relationships but to be able to guide us on principles i've noticed believers know very little about relationships this is why many of us have been grounded although skilled a few scriptures four of them one amos chapter 3 verse 3 please write it down the bible says can two walk together except they be agreed modern day interpretation two cannot walk together unless they be compatible there must be similarity in their paradigms and understanding two people cannot become friends when there is a large difference in their perspectives there must be similarity you must believe similar things about god about life about money about family it qualifies you to be friends second scripture very very touching scripture proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24 proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24 it tells us that he who desires friends you must sow that seed proverbs 18 and verse 24 lets us know that relationship is a harvest meaning that until you sow that seed there is no harvest of relationship it says a man that hath friends must first show himself what friendly and trying to show yourself friendly will require you for bearing and even sticking closer than a brother most of us want the harvest of friendship and relationships and we never sow the seeds you don't go to a farm at around this time waiting to harvest when you did not plant relationships are harvests we must sow the seeds
Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Read with me. One to read. He that walketh with the wise shall do what? But a friend of foolish friends, what will he get? It didn't say foolish people don't have a future. That's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible says you are a product of your environment. He that walks with the wise shall himself be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Please write this down, everyone. Relationships do not maintain themselves. Relationships do not maintain themselves. It takes commitment on the part of all the parties involved to maintain relationships. Relationships do not maintain themselves. This is a fallacy that many of us must be delivered from. Relationships do not maintain themselves. It takes commitment on the part of all, not some, all the parties involved to maintain relationships. Please listen to this and you will be surprised that you will multiply your success. Relationships do not maintain themselves. Apostle, people don't like me. Show me the seeds you are sowing. The seeds of friendship. Are we together now? Apostle, nobody wants to walk. This koinonia people serve. They say, greet one another. They don't even greet me. No, sir. How to maintain relationships? This is the crux of the teaching. How to maintain relationships? I want to give you seven keys. Every one of us, make sure you learn these keys. If you truly learn these keys, I give you a guarantee. Those outside is dark, but make sure you're writing. Those online connecting everywhere, I want to show you the reason why your favor might be delayed. Number one, the first key to maintaining relationships is avoid competitive jealousy. Write it down. Key number one, you cannot sustain quality relationships until you are ready to avoid like a cancer competitive jealousy we're going to read all the scriptures every scripture i'm giving you are going to read it. so media please help us on that wise i'll give you a number of scriptures proverbs 14 verse 30 quickly please then we'll look at 27 verse 4 proverbs 14 and verse 30 the bible says a sound heart is the life of the flesh are we together read the b part it says but envy or jealousy is what rottenness it has a a disease effect to your bones let me tell you something competitive jealousy destroys you jealousy is like a wound competitive jealousy destroys you Believers are very, very competitive people. Jealous people. You bought this car, I buy it too. You bought this suit, I buy it too. If, if, you know, I'm not just saying it for Koinonia alone, but this is something I've observed. This is one of the reasons why many believers worldwide, especially in the African continent, we are obsessed with the passion to prove points. And so we do not have the patience to allow time and preparation to come to fruition men of god compete with themselves and all kinds of things there there are healthy dimensions of competition when you're speaking from a business perspective and you can challenge yourself and spoil yourself to excellence but the church has a plague of competitive jealousy members koinonia is quiet thank you jesus because that that means that the holy spirit is pounding on this is exactly how result i love you too much and i must teach you this proverbs 27 verse 4 many of us fall sick being envious of people listen very very powerful description look up please it says wrath is cruel that means it's not good don't do it anger is outrageous but compared you know in comparison who is able to stand before envy in other words, envy is worse than anger. Wrath is quell, 
Anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? Envious people never get results in their lives. They live their lives in bitterness and pain. Could this be why many of us do not maintain valuable relationships? Last scripture, Proverbs 14 verse 30. Okay, we already have that. We read it already. Proverbs 27 verse 4. We'll just leave those two. Avoid competitive jealousy. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to be patient until the word of God manifests in my life. I reject jealousy. I cast away jealousy from my life. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. It will sting your ego, but brothers and sisters, this is God speaking. Pray. The spirit of competitive jealousy. I take it away from my life. Please pray. Envious of my workers at work. Envious of my business contemporaries. No. Envy is sin. It's not just bad. It is sin. Sin against yourself. You depress yourself. There are many people that don't sleep in the night. This lady was my junior in school. She's now married and I'm not married. You are envious. This person, I was the person that, that trained this person. He's now a millionaire. I'm no longer, I'm a pastor. This is my son. It's all those jealousy and envy. Kill it now. Lift your voice and pray. Shabbatato Sekata. In the name of Jesus, I come against it. Satan, you will not destroy my propensity to quality relationships. competitive jealousy god bless you number two very quickly what is the second key to maintaining relationships i was surprised when i was studying this i found out that a, a research was done and it was it was told that one of the top three reasons why relationships do not last is because of evil speaking backbiting and gossip so the second point is avoid gossip, backbiting, and evil speaking. The Bible calls it ill speaking. Statistically, you can go and check it. The top reasons why relationships break. Give us Titus chapter 3 verse 2 please. And then Proverbs chapter 6 will read from verse 16 to 19. Avoid gossip, backbiting speaking evil unfortunately and with all due respect to the body of christ for some reason the church in nigeria i don't know if it's because of our african background we are experts at gossip experts at backbiting experts at speaking evil to speak evil of no man are we there to be no brawlers but gentle showing all meekness unto all men to speak evil of no man it is amazing how there is an appetite in people to talk ill and evil of people there are believers that come to church only to come and find out what is wrong are we together you speak evil of people no. we speak evil of our parents we speak evil of leaders pastors business people we speak evil of our government we speak evil of anybody if it is not you every other person has a problem you will never maintain good relationships like that and you will lose out on opportunities for cheap victory is God speaking to us avoid gossip gossip is a great sign of weakness gossip is a sign of mediocrity it's a sign of lack of confidence in yourself it's a spirit I'm sorry to say it and please don't be offended most of us the homes where we grew up from that's the norm that's where we got this mindset everybody talks about everybody gossip backbiting speaking evil Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 to 19 Proverbs chapter 6 just write it and look up i'll read it these six things does the lord hate so god hates it these six things does the lord hate seven are an abomination unto him we're reading to 19 number one a proud look 
Number two, a lying tongue. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. Number four, a heart that devised wicked imagination. There is such a heart. Feet that be swift in running into mischief. 19, a false witness that speaketh lies. And the last of them is what? He that soweth discord. It didn't say among men. Among who? You find them in every church and every ministry. Experts are joining the heads of nice people together. Hey, Jimmy, I, I wouldn't have told you, but I've, I've, do you know, have you noticed that every time Koinonia comes, there's a way Pastor Alpha looks at you. I will gist you about it later. It's devilish. It's devilish. It's devilish. You are sowing seeds of discord. There are many people who were happy friends until a wrong information came in between them. There are husbands and wives that live in hatred because a third party was introduced. Adam and Eve were living in harmony until there is a third voice. You must be careful. Third voice is ruin quality relationships. How many of you God wanted to lift you until somebody came in with a report and said, sorry, you. how many ladies would have been married now but someone who sows seeds of discord? Sorry, I, I overheard somewhere that you like this lady. Are you, are you blind? I just came to advise you. Are you blind? This lady that has lived like this, she was my neighbor growing up. So it's, it's something I know. Is that how you hate your destiny? And the brother goes back. Be careful because when we pray during miracle services, we pray very wild prayers and tell God to do those any and everything standing on the way of people's progress. And you must be careful that that's not you. Because the prayer will be answered anyway. Are we together? He that soweth discord. Do you know that gossip can be habitual? Meaning even if there is nothing to say, because you have trained your mind, you will always. You just see somebody pass and say, ah, let me tell you something. I didn't plan to talk, but no. Don't laugh. Almost everybody is guilty of this. So when it's time to pray, we will cry before God first for yourself and say, Lord, I'm guilty. I am very, very guilty. Are we together? Yes. Worship team standing to worship. I see how this guy is standing. That's the guy I'm telling you. Hey, you don't know. That guy, I saw him around that area yesterday. He likes the lady. He likes it. What is your business? For heaven's sake, what is your business? Are we together? Yeah. What is your business? Gossip. Backbiting. Ill-spoken words. You just hear that somebody is rising. You say, who? Who is rising? No, I need to do something about it. Don't become like that. Ill-spoken words. The appetite. You see, every time you talk bad about people, I want you to remember that you are destroying God's creation. You must stop it. He put yourself in the shoe of the ones you are destroying. When you tear down people and destroy them. How many people tear down men of God? You don't think about their churches. What happens to their members while you are destroying them? What happens when you are talking ill of a pastor? What happens when you are tearing him down? What happens when you are insulting the pastor's wife? Think of what happens to her reputation. It affects her leadership. We are experts at doing it. It's a habit that I trust that God will break from us. Because many of us, this is what drives friends from us. Come, Pastor Alpha. God brings your destiny helper. He holds your hand. In two weeks, in two weeks, everybody knows everything about you. Ah, I came to Apostle's house. I saw him counting dollars. <laughs> don't mind that quietness oh apostle is rich you think it's an information you are giving and god is saying you see this person you are not a candidate for my help carry your trouble and go away and say ah but god is going to help me no we have destroyed our lives destroyed opportunities 
how many people would have gotten jobs if they knew how to keep quiet do you know some people so gossip that they gossip even about themselves they have is an obsession if there is nothing to talk about you can even be the person to act the drama yourself i beat my wife i just want you to know honestly and you see listen the thing about gossip and ill speaking please listen this is a lesson for all of us to learn the thing about gossip is it is like lost whoever is the object there is the one you will tell the information to including a child imagine me now coming to talk assuming pastor alpha has a child that is grown but because there is an appetite you are walking in a house and you are now talking kite boy this is your father now wow. you are poisoning the mind of the child what do you think happens now are we together we must repent from the spirit of backbiting and gossip romans chapter 16 verse 17 please give it to us quickly gossip terrible backbiting terrible now i beseech you brethren mark them which cause division and offense is contrary to the doctrine that we have learned do what to them what is the scriptural remedy avoid them avoid them listen hold on let me teach you something be careful when you partner with gossip because very soon the person gossiping will need favor from the one he's talking about and you will be the scapegoat to use and secure that favor a typical example is workers people who work in their profession your boss your superior they come and meet you and say this is our boss said so 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 and so and they gossip when promotion comes what do you think happens they say uh, boss i i just came to appreciate you and to confess something sir let me be honest i've been talking about you you see he has bailed himself abby but sir this is even the milder part of the story the worst one is i'm about to tell you someone else who joined me because he's looking for promotion and all of a sudden a boss that says see me by three o'clock you come back and say pack up your bags because next week you are leaving this company why sir please leave my office seed of discord gossip is cancerous backbiting 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 you must avoid it like a cancer number three the third way to maintain relationships avoid offense avoid offense what is offense the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense offense is a measure of the ease your ease of volatility there are people who get offended you can just look at them and uh -uh it's like this your cloth did you iron it well and they say you are insulting my pedigree what no 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 no. there are people who are volatile the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 talking about love now it says love does not behave itself unseemingly seeketh not her own is not easily provoked or anger if you are truly walking in love i don't care what your background is you will not be easily angered there are people who get angry very easily very easily bros how now you say me i'm 10 years older than you i am please don't think that because me on a very good day won't you be saying money easily offended you see offense is a product of judging things from the lens of your own perception of yourself when you judge things from a faulty perception things will be interpreted from the lens of your own limitation offense refuse to be offended refuse to be offended there will be occasion for offense in every relationship from a marriage relationship a business relationship ministerial relationship you must make up your mind as a choice that 
the blessings that I seek to receive from the relationships God is bringing in my life is greater than any offense offense destroys because you see when you are offended one of the many ways you act is speech and every time you speak with a heart of offense usually the Holy Spirit is not in charge of that conversation you will talk in the flesh you can make it means that you cannot withdraw again many people have lost precious relationships because if they were a little temperous they would have regained it many people have lost business opportunities because of that offense is an advice it's an encouragement the bible says one of the signs that characterize the end of days is that many shall be offended let me tell you you are not a true human being if you wake up and in 24 hours there is no reason for offense especially if you are a leader people do things that should get me offended every day i do things that should get people offended every day an example is what i'm teaching now are we together now there are things that get people offended you must make up your mind that i will not be offended how many men of god get offended and they can preach they get offended at home they come and climb the stage and you know that that preaching is a lashing down of something that happened between them and their wives and their children the kind of examples they are giving are not relevant to any other member unless their family so you know that this is a this guy is just talking to his wife or the neighbor or the worker using the pulpit offense makes you small offense makes you cheap offense reduces your worth let me tell you something about offense most of those who offend you or they know they offended you the goal is that their joy is in your reaction most of those who offend offend intentionally but when you grow above it you demonstrate that you are living at a higher level of living after this service now on your way home an angry driver an angry man something will happen that will offend you or you must make up your mind and say satan you're a liar i already see your hand i will not be offended say in the name of jesus i reject offense is god speaking to us number four how do we maintain relationships practice forgiveness practice forgiveness mark chapter 11 verse 25 then ephesians 4 32 please give it to us mark 11 25 practice forgiveness i don't know one relationship including the one of you and god that can thrive without forgiveness it's not god you are forgiving God is forgiving you all the time because there are people who really are angry with God okay I forgive you God let's get back into the relationship and when ye stand praying most prayer warriors miss this let me tell you why there is hardship in people's prayer lives it's not all about demons and when ye stand praying what is the rule forgive comma if ye have ought against any that your father in heaven may forgive you your trespasses it's amazing how we pile up people in our hearts some of us have physical books physical books like police reports where you write this sister jane embarrassment sam laughing at me pastor alpha shouted at me the other day while he was preaching and you write everything protocol department <laughs> their own star 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 they offended me ushers i was falling before everybody and they were watching me i injured myself and you write it down then you leave everything and say father don't you know that i'm human and god says really it's like a small child that begs you for something then you give him and say give back and he refuses that's exactly what we do you can never live in this life without forgiveness what is forgiveness forgiveness is giving forgiveness is giving it is giving pardon and mercy forgiveness a disposition where you are ready to let go even before the offense happens forgiveness forgiveness is a, is a dimension of giving if you are not a forgiver you are not a giver not forgiving 
is one way of manifesting greed it's not just refusing seed forgiveness but let me balance very quickly you don't forgive just to make peace forgiving to make peace is one of the benefits of forgiveness but the primary purpose of forgiveness is to release yourself so you can move forward because there are times the people you forgive are still not ready to receive it let me be very honest and let me balance forgiveness is only useful when there is repentance a willingness to turn away forgiveness is useless to the person you are forgiving if there is no repentance it is useful to you let me show you what offense does um can i use someone sam please come watch this this is what offense does i want to move forward but i think sam is standing my way and so i'm trying to push him will i move forward holding him i'm trying to hold sam i can't move forward myself this is what forgiveness is he can be there not even deserving it but i release him so that i can move forward i can leave him and his trouble there if he accepts that he is wrong and turns then we make peace and we can work together if he refuses i still forgive so that i can move forward let me tell you the most wounded in the refusal to forgive is the offender or the offended the person who was offended is the one who is most wounded it is painful that the person who even offended you is not even aware and plans to do it again because it was a product of mindset so your assignment is to have a disposition where you forgive as a leader people will offend you every day people will do wrong things every day you must forgive hallelujah everybody say i receive grace to forgive say i let go everyone i'm holding in my hands holding people hold them in your heart I will never forgive my mother except ah, I have said my own. And you can never receive blessing. I will never forgive my father for what my father has done. If I have a knife, I will kill him by myself and say, Daddy, die. I'm the one killing you. I will never forgive that person who raped me when I was four years old. I will never forgive that uh, what they call it now that brother he went out with me and broke and scattered my heart please forgive so that you can move forward forgive so that you can move forward turn it into prayer in one minute lord i'm tired of holding people down i release right now i let go that boss in the name of jesus i release my husband i release my wife i release my co-worker i release my business partner i release the man of god i release my head of department i release my escorts i release the members in my department i release joshua selman make sure you pray i release everyone who has offended me because i want to move forward i want to move forward practice forgiveness hallelujah it says and be ye kind one to another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as god for christ's sake forgave us very quickly ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 okay ephesians 4 verse 32 is there and then give us luke chapter 6 verse 37 luke 6 37 let's hurry up luke 6 37 luke chapter 6 verse 37 it says judge not and ye shall not be judged in other words every time you judge people you are scheduling seasons for yourself condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven make sure you practice this make sure you practice this number five very quickly how do i mean quality relationships be tolerant be tolerant forgiveness is different from tolerance forgiveness is somebody's shortcomings that he hopefully will adjust from it tolerance is somebody's personality or a default belief system that may not change you have to incorporate it as part of that person's living there are people i wish i would tell you everybody around you will change there are people who will not change so you switch from forgiveness to tolerance you accommodate that limitation in their life factor it and build a system around it is god speaking to us yes 
I have many friends, all kinds of friends. And just like me, they are very funny people. Everybody has all kinds of attributes. The same way I am to them too. But it takes tolerance. There are some things in me, unfortunately, may not change. Tolerance. You, don't you, Tine? I like everybody around me to talk. But say, I don't talk. You don't need forgiveness. What do you need? Tolerance. Or you, you talk too much. I just ask you a question. Where is, where is uh, my trouser? You say, uh, the other one, I didn't ask you about what happened. Where is my trouser, please? Tolerance. Your destiny helper may be a talkative. If you are tolerant to the talkativeness, then you receive the breakthrough. Everybody in your life cannot be you and cannot be like you. If everybody was like me, the world would be a terrible place. You would think the world would be a nice place. No. You don't want to know some of the boring aspects of my life. This world will be a sad place. <laughs> you will only be studying and reading and sleeping. What a world. I am so happy for people who are not me. They add flavor. I benefit from the joy of them not being me. You must have a high degree of tolerance. Colossians chapter 3. Please help us. 12 and 13. Colossians chapter 3. It's called forbearance. You must tolerate people. Put on therefore as the elect of God. Holy and beloved. Bowels of mercy. Kindness. Humbleness of mind. Meekness. Long suffering. 13. Forbearing one another. And forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any. Even as Christ forgave. So also do ye, forbearing one another. You have business partners, you need forbearance. Are we together? You are in your office working, you need forbearance. In a ministry like this, you need forbearance. Everybody cannot be you. Brothers and sisters, learn this. Oh God, change them. Wonderful prayer. But they have their wills. If they don't change, does that mean you will not move forward? Tolerance. Number six. The sixth principle for maintaining quality relationships is that you must be a contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved. You maintain relationships by being valuable to the relationship. You must be a contributor. There are parasitic relationships. Relationships are meant for mutual benefit. Maybe not equally mutual in, in terms of degree of contribution I cannot be your friend and be at a high level with you when you are not contributing anything in my life no Ejimi is my friend he contributes greatly in my life I contribute greatly in his life so there is a basis for continuity are we together now if you are not valuable to a relationship that relationship's lifespan is very small it will never please hear this this is true for marriage it is true for business it is true for ministry there are many people who complain and say joshua selman doesn't want to be my friend doesn't want to be this and i said no no i want to be your friend it's just that i am passionate about value be a contributor money is not the only thing to contribute love kindness godliness are we together now there are so many things to bring into a relationship not everybody's looking for money in a relationship there are people who have conquered that realm. they need love they need value they need understanding they need help you must learn this if you want a guy to come into your life what value are you going to bring i say guy what value are you going to bring even the church and Christ truly speak he doesn't need anything from us but because of his love he limited himself to allow us space to be able to contribute something that's why when we worship and praise him is we 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 we're not necessarily adding anything to him but he has limited himself that way so that it can give us room for expression relationships must be mutually beneficial if there are five people in a business and only two are running that business they are the two who will be the closest of friends the rest will just be freelance people around who will feel angry don't 
be angry in a relationship that you are not bringing quality value please i want us to go back home and think about the reason why our family members do not value us so much the reason why even in the house of god it's true that we love everybody unconditionally but we are not committed to everybody at the same level it is according to contribution say amen you must be a contributor if you are helping me spiritually you will be close to me if you are helping me financially you will be close to me if you are helping me in terms of the love for God if you are helping me fulfill my assignment you will be close to me if you are not doing any of this I love you but you can't expect to be close to me the same way if I'm not contributing meaningfully to your life you love me but I can't be close to you relationships are based on contributions I want you to learn this wanting friends around you to be so committed without anything to bring to the table is flattery brothers and sisters there must be a commitment no matter how little it is it may be prayer it may be love it may be rest sister you may not be educated but you can bring love you can bring patience are we together yes you are the one that when the guy is getting sad you say no calm down it may not be so you are the guy that will say no 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 my dear calm down i know she offended you but take it easy there has to be a contribution you walk with the holy spirit you are rebellious you are disobedient you don't pray no secret place and you say lord why are you not close to me and he says what is all this are you not hearing what the apostle is saying you have to be the mutual contribution give me time i give you more of myself become a contributor to the growth of the relationship number seven so we wrap up for tonight practice genuine love the last key to maintaining quality relationship practice genuine love underline the word genuine there are many people whose relationships are purely based on what i will get in as much as i have spoken about value brothers and sisters if the only basis for relating people is what you will get you are a selfish personality whether as a husband as a wife as a man of god as a member as a worker as a career person as a business person it is not always about what you will get it is about who you are are we together my life will be an ugly life if the only people in my life are just those who can contribute to me no while we were yet sinners unable to contribute anything in due season christ died for us proverbs chapter 10 verse 12 please quickly proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12 hatred stirred up strife but love covers what let me tell you something brothers and sisters it is one proof that the friend you have whether it's a love relationship or any kind of relationship will last when you truly love somebody you will make very legitimate excuses for their weaknesses it will be difficult for you to find reasons to throw people away if you can throw people easily it's a sign that you don't deserve to be close to them love can cover a multitude of sins I see people in relationships not love really all kinds of relationships and the ease with which they get offended no sir if five people come into your life not love relationship now necessarily five people come into your life none of them can stand two weeks the problem is you not them are we together hatred stir it up strife but love covereth how many sins that means there is nothing anybody does to you that cannot be covered when there is genuine love the secret to peace all kinds john 13 35 john 13 35 then give us first john 4 20 first john 4 20 john 13 35 john 13 verse 35 By this shall how many men all men know that ye are my disciples not if you pray in tongues not if you have a Christian name if ye have love not for God love for one another 
loving God is not necessarily the ultimate proof that you are walking in love because it says that if you love God that you do not see or you don't love your neighbor that you see how can you claim you love God that you see listen brothers and sisters this issue of love you one another is something we must indoctrinate ourselves in I, I have told myself I cannot hate anybody in the house of God no impossible impossible truly speaking I'm not just saying it I live a very peaceful life <sighs> Apostle, why are you angry can you no I've been delivered I live a happy and peaceful life peaceful life very peaceful life very peaceful life by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another do you love people or do you use people you can use people you can use a relationship you can use a wife you can use a husband you can use a boss you can use employees pastors you can use members you can use workers the workers in this ministry know with all humility that i love them with all my heart i love the leaders they know it i'm lavish about it i love them with all my heart how could i ever hate the people that so serve with all their heart this is why some of us never get the anointing this is why many of us never command results our hearts are full of hatred there is always one bad story to say no. First John 4 verse 20 and then we round up. First John 4 verse 20. God has spoken to us tonight. If a man say, even if his name is Joshua Selman, if Joshua Selman says, I love God, like many Christians say, and hated his brother, he didn't say hated, he didn't describe what kind of brother and the offense the brother did. He just said if he hated his brother, please read on if you're a Christian. What is he? He didn't say he's an angry person and God understands. That person is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen, how can he love God that he had not seen? Church, we must not only love Jesus, we must love ourselves. More pastors will experience levels of the anointing when they switch just from loving God and extend it to loving men any pastor that's why I honor the Lord for the ministers around I mean Reverend Dr. Tende is here God bless you thank you so much a number of other ministers scattered around every time I see them come visit like this I am very blessed love there are times I pick up my phone and I just send all my pastor friends text messages and I just tell them how are you how is the work the Lord bless you the Lord honor you there are times that I just do it to my friends. Some of you, you never do it. I say, has he ever done it to me? You want a harvest of a seed you are not sowing? No, sir. If you had sown that seed, the friend you used to know, that is now a great man, you would have maintained a relationship that would have blessed you. But when you had privilege, the number he had then that you had, you did not invest in it. And now he has changed his life only those who blessed him have the new line you are not part of them and you are angry and grumbling and say all these pastors i remember when god started helping me a lot of people were offended and say what is all this thing eh? i tried to call apostle he cannot call you call you say protocol he doesn't know me and i said you can imagine two years you have never asked whether god whether koinonia people are eating whether how did you collect offering is god faithful are there demons attacking you can i pray you didn't send any text and then you just hear that god is faithful and you want a prayer request and just call and demand no it's not done that way it's an investment you don't get anything from it when you don't commit to it there are people who don't honor anybody they don't recognize anybody they don't care just call and say look I have Bishop Oedipo's number C, Bishop David Oedipo, let me call. And you call, he says, see all these Hogan men of God. I will not pick if I'm him. No, sir. It's not because I hate you. They are busy maintaining the relationships that are interested in them. Please don't make arrogant demands of attention over relationships you are not willing to commit to. A little prayer. I'm not talking of money. A little prayer. Man of God, how are you, sir? Just to find out. Mommy, how are you? daddy how are you pastor how are you it's been three years we've not seen i hope god is doing well god bless you and increase you they are noting it 
even if they don't have time to reply they are noting it the day they see that number there are many numbers i don't have say but if i see them i know i know that this person cares a lot about the ministry how is koinonia some people are very sarcastic greetings here my name is this these are my problems you just listen it bless you and i say what just like that There are people who only call when they need help. Sir, um, just to greet you, my mother has come again, no, honestly. Uh, my father has come again, no. my sister. Remember the, the thing I told you the other time? You don't remember me? I, I'm sorry, was it last week? No, I met you June last year now. June last year. I met you and you are reminding me today. No. You must invest in relationships. You must love brothers and sisters i stand by the integrity of god's word and i tell you this if you practice these things before last koinonia it would have changed your life there are some of you this is what you need this is the revelation you need to enter the next level it's not like the job cannot come there are many people now that admission will start you're going to start disturbing our daddy prof and disturbing a lot of other people. Sir, I remember it's me that sent you CV and says, is it because I'm coming for Koinonia and you are seeing me like that? You've never done anything. You've never said take five for life and all of that. No, 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 no. Sir, the, the, I, just to let you know that uh, by God's grace, I'll be finishing now. You promised me in 300 level that you'll give me money for, for project. You didn't follow it up, not in prayer, not with wisdom. No. Please learn this. Practice this right now. Call, write the list of the top 10 relevant people in your life and start investing in them and watch what happens to you. Because when a man loves you, everything he has loves you too. If a millionaire loves you, his money loves you too. An anointed man loves you, his anointing will love you. There are anointings that reject people. Yes. Cry your heart to Jesus. He is here. He wants to reveal himself first as Savior, before deliverer, before healer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of you standing stretched to the outside, please look at me. I see you, some of you are crying sincerely from your heart. Listen, there is no man who has the power and authority to condemn you, young and old. I don't care what you have done. I don't care how your life is. We are all products of his mercy and grace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let any man point an accusing finger, but then you cannot remain where you are. There are people standing here and say, man of God, if you will lead me to pray, I will, I will love it. I've been praying for an opportunity like this. But there are powers always keeping me. Wherever you are, inside, outside, don't mind who is looking at you. Lift your right hand to heaven and you are going to say this prayer after me. Please, it is not a poem. It is a genuine, genuine prayer, meaning from the depth of your heart. It says, I am not ashamed of the gospel why for it is the power of god unto salvation the lord wants to give you a new beginning i know you came to be healed but he wants to take over your destiny with your hands lifted to jesus who is here not in heaven right here in this place say after me passionately and sincerely say lord jesus i love you with all my heart this night I have heard your word and I make up my mind that from tonight and for the rest of my days I will live for you I will serve you without shame without fear without going back this night I hand over my life to you say it again I hand over my life to you be my Lord be my Savior I declare that the power 
of sin of satan of the flesh is broken every association that is not of god i'm separated from them this night i declare that the joy of salvation and the peace and a new beginning is mine from today i am a child of god and i will live for him forever hallelujah keep your hands lifted jesus look at the ones you died for when you hung upon that cross you saw them and today we are glad to present them to you this is why you put this meeting together we lift them up as trophies worthy trophies for your blood worthy trophies for your death and lord i decree and declare that these ones you have brought tonight none will be lost i speak over your life the joy of salvation that very few people know about may it be your inheritance today i declare that the peace that surpasses all understanding let it be yours today i declare that every guilt the devil uses against you every accusation we roll it away right now in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven by the message of god i declare that you have a new beginning with god you are empowered by the spirit to live a victorious life in the name of jesus christ amen and amen let's appreciate them keep standing everyone i'll give you some instructions now now there are so many of you probably hundreds of you this is what i want you to do um protocol please help coordinate let's do it this way those of you who are in the second overflow the overflow right from the door that leads to the road as you go out please let's have some of the ushers you stand so they can attend to you there what will happen is they are going to have your details i know you are all so many but we want your details we have a system to follow you up and to make sure you are grounded in god that's number one that's the first instruction so those outside those here at the overflow and those inside you may not need to go out just wait where you are and someone will come to attend to you please i hope the relevant departments are listening so that we can respond to them very quickly we have five ten minutes for this because i'll start praying for the sick now praise the lord now the second instruction i want to give all of you is this the bible says they that be planted in the house of god it says they shall flourish it is important not only for you to just get born again but to be planted in the house of god instruction number three is we have a system of spiritual growth here in koinonia it's a very large house so what we do is that anyone who gets born again automatically we transfer them to our prayer department for one month whether or not you will continue as a member in the prayer department the prayer department meets tuesdays 4 p.m just at the church uh, when you walk from this road right down rema chapel more information will be communicated to you and so we usually have all um, new converts to be part of the prayer department there you get to be filled with the holy spirit and you have seasons of prayer to build your spirit and it helps you to cultivate a culture of the word and also to have a kingdom community that supports your spiritual growth all these things are very important for your growth i don't want you to waste this experience praise the lord i bless you in the name of jesus and shortly the lord is going to be turning your life around in greater dimensions so let's do this very quickly appreciate them as they go just guide them whether or not you belong to any department you're a member of koinonia you see any of them moving just guide them as they go out quickly let's honor them koinonia as they do so is that the best you can do hallelujah please coordinate them coordinate them let's just give them some room so that they can go out and then we will shake off every power of darkness roaming around anybody's life i never see anyone like you i never see anyone like you 
Yeah, I never see anyone like you. I never see Where's Sam? Help me. Like I never see anyone like you. I never see Everyone stand up. Let's pray some prayers before. Let's pray some prayers while they are working on the people. Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. Please say be serious in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight visit me. This is my destiny. Give me strange results. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Visit me. In the name of Jesus, visit me. Step into my destiny. Step into my destiny. Step into my destiny. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Shout it again in the name of Jesus. Every long standing issue in my life and my destiny I declare that you must give way tonight lift your voice and begin to pray long standing challenges are you praying tonight Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, if you can, pair yourselves into two and pray this prayer. If you are holding a child or you are doing something, that's all right. Otherwise, find somebody, a serious neighbor, hold the hand. I want you to agree. Say, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the door for the next level of my life and that of my neighbor must be open now. Lift your voice and pray. Agree. If any truth shall agree, as touching, believe in what you are saying. You are opening doors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are still holding your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight, take away shame. Take away mockery from my life 
my family and my neighbor lift your voice and pray seriously roll away the reproach roll away the reproach of mockery roll away the reproach of shame roll away the reproach pray roll away the reproach Roll away the reproach. Oh. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, expose every force every yoke every spirit behind the tragedies in my life in my destiny and my family expose them tonight lift your voice and pray for the light shines in darkness pray for the light shines in darkness let your light shine, O God. Pray. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Lord. Let your anointing, let your unction locate me tonight and turn my life around. Lift your voice and pray that the power of God must locate me. Change my destiny. Let your power pray. One encounter with the anointing of the Holy Ghost can wipe your tears, my brother, my sister. Pray. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like menorah. Light me, Lord. Listen, listen to me. I will just give you an instruction. Just help those under the anointing, but listen to me carefully, please, everyone. Do you know the reason why we minister deliverance? Listen, listen carefully. You have to understand this. The reason why we minister deliverance, you don't spend your whole life going through deliverance. However, there are lives, come my dear, when a spirit listen carefully 
when a spirit latches onto your life and destiny brothers and sisters let me tell you i don't care what you do physically remember spiritual intelligence you can be doing the right physical things but the presence of a spirit representing an embargo representing a covenant an authorization for your doom will keep you down there and you find out that your life will never open up when people gather like this hear me they come with prayer requests they come with problems but you see behind those problems are spirits are we together now the spirits that are responsible for lack of favor the spirits that are responsible for a hard life the spirits that are responsible for infirmity all kinds of cases you know one of our dear people here in the ministry i prayed over the father's picture i've seen those kinds of cases on television and all of that but you could look at the leg and see the bone the bone the flesh had eaten to a point that you could see the bone what happened to the man he went to bed in the night brothers and sisters i think somebody did something for him in a dream and he woke up physically and his legs started eating up the bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness you want to move forward but there is an embargo the solution is not counseling you need an encounter with power everybody say power listen the power of the holy spirit is not a negotiator it's an enforcer when the power of god comes it does not ask you whether you want to be free your assignment is to be open till it reaches you when it comes it scatters anything that does not look like god lift your hands everyone just lift your hands and be silent i'll pray for you now the spirit of god is upon me lift your hands everyone there are people here right now i want you to bring there are the first sets of people who will come out ushers grace for you and protocol i know you have a lot of work today because there's such a crowd right to the road but i want to pray everyone please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people right now in your silence hold on maybe just this the power of god will begin to come upon you what is happening right now before we pray for the sick is massive deliverance that deliverance is equal to breakthrough equal to new levels but lift your hands there are people here who are under strong yokes of delay and the lord gives me an instruction we will just lift our hands and be silent that's all the instruction and inside and outside the spirit of god will begin to locate them are we together when that happens then we'll take it off from there that's the first thing god wants to do tonight just lift your hands everyone thank you jesus the lord is asking me to stretch my hands and there are people and families and those following on online except you are not under the influence of the spirit of delay that spirit must leave you are we together so keep your hands lifted thank you jesus lord wherever they are right now i stretch my hands according to the instructions you have given me inside and outside right now i see the anointing of the spirit already falling over the spirit of delay keep your hands lifted bring them out outside there just the angels of the lord are walking i'm seeing like smoke just moving across lines line by line inside and outside when it comes to you when you are under that influence that's the end of it right now i command it the word of the lord is upon this prophecy in the name of jesus no instruments don't play anything outside there is massive deliverance happening separation from delays separation from delays bring them out thank you jesus delays you want to move forward but the spirit ties you down it's over right now no you can't dodge it you are under an atmosphere there is an influence the influence of the spirit line by line the holy ghost is moving row by row there is no faking it line by line lord every row every line every individual 
let no one in this category escape it for the sake of your mercy and your grace no matter where you are inside and outside online don't worry the spirit of god is moving one by one it must catch up with you the word of the lord is upon it bring them out young old destinies that have been delayed tonight there is serious grace for deliverance those of you lifting up your hands be sensitive be sensitive we're in a prophetic atmosphere right now bring them i see people outside kai my god 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 many people many people many people many people there's someone you are following from kenya you are watching from a laptop the anointing your hands are shaking the spirit of the lord is upon you judging every darkness tonight you will be located by god you prayed it you must be free please help the ushers if there are too if there are too few protocol join them different departments help them the lord really wants to set people free it's a year of triumph don't think these people are just coming out for show they represent breakthroughs these are the people who god wants to give testimonies darkness raging over the lives of people they came from different places how will god leave them that way right now all of you in front here i decree and declare to those spirits at the count of three let them go you know my voice one two three go 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 out of their lives now out now i command you by the influence of the spirit i decree and declare let their destinies go delay broken now hallelujah now lift your hands my god you'll be surprised at what will happen now everyone self tell me in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus the grace for open doors right now break every chain in my life keep your hands lifted watch it happen now that's the instruction god gave me that grace breaking chains now i'm speaking across the congregation i have been seeing this for weeks but locks opening in the realm of the spirit that's what the lord is showing me but locks opening, opening, opening right now. I open them. I'm under the shadow of your your influence is all over me I'm under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me I'm under the shadow Your influence is all over me your hands fire is coming on 32 people and this fire that is coming upon them 
is to break family altars i hear family altars right now oh god in the name of jesus one two three i set those altars now on fire right now 32 people i see in the realm of the spirit i command it right now i command it everyone on this ground under the influence of any altar now be free now help them please help that lady be free now right now be free now be free now your influence is all over me i'm under the shadow of your own everyone lift your hands say this after me in the name of jesus please say it seriously say in the name of jesus any spirit that has had access to my life and is causing destruction hear the word of the lord as i shout the name jesus i command you to live my life at the count of three shout jesus there will be an exiting of many strange spirits one two three shouting i command spirits you go now you go now you go now you go now inside and outside any spirit resident within any man's life any woman's life causing pain Hallelujah. Oh, as I pray for grace for you in Jesus' name. Because what I see now is not a nice thing. The Lord is asking me that we shout Jesus. There are people who are going to vomit physical things. That's why I said it's a messy scene. I, I apologize. We're very neat and organized people inside and outside. But in the name of Jesus right now, any stranger in your body at the count of three must go out now. One, two, three. I command every stranger. Go now. Every poison. Every devil causing sicknesses, every fibroid, every devil, every enchantment. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a vision of a lady. If you're here, I want you to come out. I'm seeing your family doing something like a sacrifice, and they are giving somebody, everybody, a substance like a drink, something to take. They gave everybody, including you, and you took it. Where is that person? Please, if you're here, I want you to come out quickly. It's a, it's a highly diabolic thing they gave everybody. Where are you? Come. Your deliverance comes now. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Help me. Your influence is all over me. Let's have another mic, please. Hold on. Stand up, my dear. Is this the lady? Two of them? Stand up. Where are you from? Look at me. Huh? Kogi State. State. What happened to you? Hold on. I converted. Hold on. I'm looking at you, Kai. This thing. You entered a covenant. Huh? Yes. With who? 
I don't know. My mother, I don't know. They she brought somebody and you people entered the covenant and they gave you something. Hold my hands. Shout Jesus. I command that covenant that demonic thing time your life in this miracle service it lives now in the name of jesus you too where are you from, I'm from Kogi State. you are from Kogi State. the same thing hold my hands look at me i command that devil to leave you now whatever yoke please don't come out if i don't call your case are you part of them mr man young man you're part of them in the name of jesus i set you free bring the, your, you two come make sure that so that we don't get the place rowdy be delivered now help her out be free now out i'm interested in this lady please stand up my dear if you can this lady's whole family is in bondage whole family the entire family nothing is working in your family the lord wants to deliver you right now hold my hands I command that spirit your time is up leave this family now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i break the yoke over your life now out now there is a lady you have been coughing blood where are you you are coughing literally and blood is coming out there is a lady like that please where are you let's hurry up we have a lot to do this night the lord is asking me to minister to a lady that coughs and then blood you cough blood who is that inside outside except you are under the anointing please come out quickly i want to pray for that person now where are you how long hold on just just keep up where's the mic how long you you are an usher you how long three weeks eh? three weeks. for three weeks you've been caught lay your hand on your chest you too lay your hands on your chest you too ah huh? substance your what hold on please guys hold on yours is what the substance you spoke about what substance you given some medicine to take in the family lift and your hands question. lift your hands leave both of them i'm seeing an angel pouring something on your hand your hand will start shaking and then the lord is bringing you strange deliverance it will start from your hands down to your body i place the word of god upon your life right now in the name of jesus christ both of you look at me both of you cough out blood in the name of jesus i lay my hands upon you it ends now in the name of jesus out right now there are spirits responsible for this kite ta, 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 ta. do you know what i just saw the lord opened my eyes and i saw like a cage and in the cage i saw snakes that's all i'm seeing that's all i'm seeing lift your hands everybody the lord is just asking me to wave my hands over the congregation there are people who represent that oppression it will leave now the Lord is asking me to wave my hands. Lord, as you have said, I see snakes in cages. Whose destiny is that? Right now, whose destiny is that? I wave my hands. In the name of Jesus, please release them for your glory. Release them now. Help them, please, Jesus Christ. Inside, outside. Be out of that cage now. I see snakes, serpents. Some of you see them in your dreams. They must go now. They are leaving you now. Now. They are leaving you now. I command liberty. 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 Hallelujah. I'm hearing a name, Jane. Jane. Like J A N E. Jane. 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 I'm also hearing another name, Victory. Is it Victory? Like Victory. Victory. Please don't come out if that's not your name. What's your name? Jane. Your name is Victory. Where are you from? Dr. 
State. Delta State. I have to pray for you. Your family is being seriously oppressed. Why are you people here? You are all Jane. Jane, your name is Victory. I want to pray for you. Kaza Chat. Kaza Chat. Is it Kaza Chat? Who is that? Kaza Chat. I'm hearing that name. That's that's like a Kaduna name. Kaza Chat. Please, who is that? The breakthrough of your family has come. Kaza Chat. Is it? I don't know why God is going to Kaduna now. Nom. Is it Nom Shu or Nom Shu or something like that? I don't know if there's a name like that. Nom Nom Shu or something like that. Nom something. Listen, that is your name. You are. Why are they here? I call their names. I'm going to lay hands on you. Except for you, I don't even know why the rest of you are. But please, I want you to believe. The moment I lay my hands on you, something will happen. The Lord is saying I should start with you. Lord, open her door now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold my hands. Reproach leaves your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Reproach lives your life now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Reproach lives your life now. Reproach lives your life now. Hold my hands. Call your parents and tell them the Lord is giving them breakthrough. Your family, your entire family, Delta State, breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hold on. The serious witchcraft over your life hold my hands Lord the Lord is asking me to walk with you this is how your destiny is opening up that's what the Lord is asking me to do to walk with you to walk with you something is happening it's a prophetic act you will not help her to walk with you opens in the name of Jesus your destiny opens up now in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands this girl lift your hands where you are i'm seeing wind around you and the lord is that wind is going anti-clockwise anti-clockwise and the lord said is restoration i stretch my hands upon you right now i release that grace for restoration restoration there are seven other people who will tap from this anointing this same anointing right now seven seven right now the anointing for restoration is coming upon them. Receive it right now, wherever you are. Zabata kata la kata frate kese brende gata. Lekate pras kata barato shubre diara. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside. It's like you came here with your daughter or something. I'm seeing a woman sit down with her daughter outside. Now that's all I'm giving about you. Please, if you can find that woman and if you understand what I've said, I want you to run and come. I want to pray for the sick now, but God is delivering people. God is delivering people. Seth. Seth. Who is Seth? S-E-T-H. S-E-T-H. Your name is Seth. Seth said the lord is stepping into his life right now said is there someone with that name said have you found the mama i'm talking about don't worry let them come let them come doesn't matter with your daughter <laughs> Mama, Kai, there is the spirit of death on your family. I'm going to pray for you. Don't be afraid. I'm not a prophet of doom. You came from where, Mama? I came from Edo State. From Edo State? Yes, but I live in Wusasa. You live in Wusasa? Yes. But you came from Edo State. Yes. I must pray for you. There, why is he here? Who is this gentleman? Seth, you too. You are an usher. Okay. 
Kai, this is not the set I'm seeing. No, I will pray for you, but I'm seeing someone else. Eh? Please don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for somebody now. Huh? Because I'm seeing an accident killing you. And you took what's the name of this thing they take? We we and you were high. You were about to cross the road. And then I'm seeing a truck with the name Angote on it, just running and killing you. There is somebody here, you smoke. Please don't be, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's not like you are not a serious person, but this thing you started taking it from when you were small and it's destroying your life. You want to be free, but you can't leave it. Please don't be ashamed. Come out now. Quickly, please. If you are still thinking about it, remain on your seat. Some you have to be free now. Come out. I'm seeing one you wore jeans dress like your shirt. I don't know if it's your shirt, it's jeans. Who is that? No, no. There, there's another. Come out. I will pray for you. This this is not the only guy. Just keep them here. I will pray for him. I'm seeing another person outside the second overflow. You are standing on the road. The Spirit of God is speaking to you. Speaking to you. This thing they roll and they smoke. And then you even, I'm seeing you swallowing a drug. I don't know what drug is that. Please come out. Come out. Clap for them as they come out. Join them quickly and come. Whether I mention your case or not, you are involved in any kind of liquor and addiction. Indian hem, whatever, forward march. Come here, your salvation. Come, sir. Please appreciate them. Clap for them. Some of them are not bad people. It's a spirit. Don't be ashamed. Please usher, uh, direct them so that they come here. I'm seeing up to five ladies in this group. Up to five ladies. Come. Don't be ashamed. Don't let anyone laugh at you. Please, this is a miracle service. Join them. We, we, Codeine. Whatever it is, join them. Whether you know the name of what you are smoking or swallowing or not, come and join them. Please, quickly, that addiction must be broken now. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Keep coming. The devil is a liar. Who can stand against the King? No one can, no one will. Oh, 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 please hold on please if the parents of the boy are here don't flog him please this is a very small boy you will not even know that this boy is wise to smoke this thing he saw an elderly person smoking it come out there is a small boy here i know what drag him out come where is the boy come out please gentlemen i'm going to pray for you don't worry you are not bad people i'm seeing a number of ladies up to five ladies they are refusing to come out there's nothing to be embarrassed jesus christ wants to set you free this is a miracle service it's not like you have evil people that's not what we're saying it's a spirit you don't stop by counseling mama there is a spirit of death over your family and i will pray for you i will pray for you in the name of jesus who is this your daughter what's your name my dear Is this mic working? Can you add Lillian, the voice? Lillian. Lillian, what do you want God to do for you? I want God to heal you. What's wrong with you? I've been having problems with my tongue. No. 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 You had a dream. Huh? You saw a snake. You can't even remember it. And from that day, you started having serious problems with your stomach. Huh? What's wrong with you? I've, I've, I've got to test. And, 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 and they told me that it's a, a liver problem. Liver problem. Because I look at you and you would think you are pregnant. But you are not pregnant. 
your stomach is swelling up mama is that true how long has it been look at look at look at evil and wickedness are you married because you see now assuming a brother has been trusting god to marry this sister do you think the brother will marry her please help me do you think he will marry her you look at her now and you think she's five or six months pregnant but she's not pregnant Kai. there is a lady who has refused to come out the power of god is going to come upon her outside you are supposed to be part of those who will be delivered here i'm seeing the angel of the lord outside that lady you were a sincere lady but i, I don't know if it's um, another lady i don't want to say what i'm seeing not to embarrass you because the, what you were introduced to is not only smoking this there are other things that i see that i may not be able to talk about I'm, I'm asking you to come out god wants you to be free for the sake of your family the power of god is going to come upon you outside outside to be free of this thing my dear look at me this is koinonia the lord is going to set you free you believe in miracles mama you believe in miracles yes, i have to pray for you money runs away from you huh madam i will pray for you mama yamuke do you hear how sir okay this is your daughter please be comfortable whatever language you can speak there is an interpreter here nobody says you must be able to speak english or whatever any language please if i call you here or you stand here for healing don't be under any pressure to say you must whatever language is comfortable speak it if i don't understand we'll find somebody to interpret please don't put yourself under pressure and say no we are excellent people but we are not fools we can't put anyone under pressure hallelujah mommy i want to pray for you because i'm seeing the lord bringing restoration to your life this is what i am seeing and the lord is asking me to pray for you can i pray for you ma'am i will pray for you I have to pray I'm seeing not you but I'm seeing somebody close to you having an accident traveling to Abuja and having an accident we have to pray I'm not saying it will happen once God reveals it is broken Lord Jesus stretch your hands and let's pray for this mommy you don't have to know her please stretch your hands and pray Lord we avert death we avert death now in the name of Jesus Christ we avert death by the power of the Holy Ghost mama is there a name like Gracilda is it Gracilda or Gracilda Gracilda or Gracilda something like that Gracilda Gracilda something like that if that sounds like your name I'm sorry if I don't mention it well the Lord kept mentioning it in my ears. Gracilda or Grisilda, something like that. If that is your name, please come on. Eh? Jacinta. No. But come. Where are you coming from? Zaria. Zaria. I have to pray for you. There's a gentleman who will destroy you. Be free now from every influence. Hold my hand anybody that is not designed by god i separate you and him forever say amen in jesus name gracilda gracilda i'm hearing gracilda something Hilda. please if it's not you no problem but that's what i'm hearing mama let's pray in the name of jesus christ i pray for you by the power of the holy spirit new beginning for you hold up please in the name of jesus christ my dear lay your hands on your stomach Kai. Lord Jesus, you gathered people here tonight to set them free. I cause the spirit responsible for this. I decree and declare that this stomach will shrink. Every devil will go away in the name of Jesus Christ. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. Look at me and you will never be barren in your life. Say amen. 
there are two ladies you are inside here there is an embargo of barrenness on your family fire is coming on those two ladies now to break that embargo you don't even know it's in your family it may not be in your life but i'm seeing it right now the angel of the lord is locating two ladies right now and is breaking that embargo thank you father i put the word of god upon this prophetic word that embargo is broken right now right now right now two ladies two ladies there's no reason why you should come here and your life should be the same mama i will pray for you this is your daughter do you know that god is going to use this girl god will use your daughter for his glory hold my hands my dear there's a small girl now but god will use you in the name of jesus christ i anoint you mama i decree and declare let hardship live your life in the name of jesus christ let hardship live your life in the name of jesus hold on i'm seeing a wind and the lord is asking me to follow it this is somebody's deliverance here yeah. this is somebody's deliverance here yeah. this is somebody's deliverance here yeah. this is somebody's deliverance the power of god is coming upon a few people as i'm walking across this place this is somebody's deliverance this is somebody's deliverance lord set them free right now right now right now i'm seeing something rolling around this room this room this room this road shala sobaria taska bandabria legeteke bashara toska bredia there's no hiding there's no hiding someone in this row someone in this row someone in this row hardship over your family is being broken right now i'm stretching my hands this row right there father locate that person right now right now right now right now right now in the name of jesus christ mama come i want you to rejoice look at me the lord hold on the lord is saying i should tell you that where you have been crying you will begin to laugh you have been crying for 30 years and the lord is saying your breakthrough has come in the name of the lord jesus christ this shit for me come madam Hold my hands the lord is there and should tell you it's your season of laughter in the name of jesus christ your season of laughter your season of laughter look at me lose her hands now lose her hands now lose her hands now in the name of jesus christ let her hands be loose your hands are tied i lose your hands in the realm of the spirit in the name of jesus christ open doors open doors open doors open doors open doors that's what the lord is saying open doors the lord has said you have waited too long it's time for the door of your destiny to be open open doors come there is a spirit in your life that makes bad boys look for you hold my hands leave her now out out when bad boys see you they can't leave you as they are passing they see you that spirit calls them back i don't know who this girl is you're a small girl but the things you know are what you have done out now in the name of jesus you have gone to places you should not go you have you have the phone numbers of people that if we know now i'm not saying you're a bad girl it's a spirit including married men they will be minding their business that spirit will call them to you i command that devil to leave you now leave you now in the name of jesus christ i want us to pray for this gentleman before we pray for the sick you see let me tell you something addiction is a very wicked spirit don't look at them especially our dear sisters my brother what happened to you eh? gone short gone short yes, sir. who shot you i'm a soldier i was shot by my body you're a meduguri yes sir 
No. He wanted to kill you. Huh? But he didn't kill you. He was directed to kill you. Hi. You are a soldier. How long has this been? It's going to seven months now. Seven months. Which where did they shoot? Your legs. And you can't walk with it. Look at me. You believe in miracles. Lift your crutch. Lift it. Lift it. Come. Come. Lift your legs. Go ahead. You are a soldier. Lift your legs. Look at this. Come on, Koinonia. Look at this. Lift your crutch up. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Walk as fast as you can. Don't be afraid. Turn around. Turn around. Come. Because your wound is not healing. There is a wound, but there is not healing. From today I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord who has perfected his leg will also perfect you where are you now you are in Zaria you are still in the force yes you are still in the force, in the force. Huh? yes sir. I want to pray for you do you believe God can favor yes sir I have to pray for you God is going to connect you with a senior person and he will lift you huh? Look at me, brothers and sisters. I want to break this addiction from your life now. Are we together? You are very sincere people. Some of you were initiated into this thing by bad friends. Some of you were initiated into these things by spirit. I'm going to lay my hands on you. While the congregation, whether your child is here or not, whether your brother is here or not, as you are praying, you are sowing a seed for your own home. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Stretch your hands. Don't look at anybody's face and run your mouth on any. It's none of your business. Koinonia is a, it's like a hospital. Stretch your hands. I will lay my hands on every one of them. Please, all of you should pray. I want to break addiction from your life. Don't feel condemned. Jesus will help you. It must be broken right now. Broken right now broken right now any kind of addiction out out now out out in the name of Jesus out look at this guy out break from his life now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ be set free be set free as soon as I lay my hands on you continue praying be set free addiction break break in the name of Jesus hold my hands darling no addiction for liquor no addiction for drugs something is leaving you I'm seeing something like an arrow coming out of your head out of her life now in the name of Jesus I break that addiction. Ah. Hey Jimmy, come. The Lord is saying you should pray for this guy. He will pray for you. This guy needs serious prayer. Just lay your hands on him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Out! Out! Now! I command that devil. This is somebody that loves God but this addiction must be broken right now I break it right now I break it right now hold my hands you are a nice lady but we have to break this thing Lord please for your mercy let it be broken in her life in the name of Jesus Christ 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 hallelujah the Lord is asking me to minister to somebody I'm seeing a very interesting case you love God please don't be ashamed there is a particular pain reliever you are addicted to who is that person I want to pray for you now whether you are sick or not come and stand here 
particular pain reliever you can't help it you can wake up 1 a.m. in the night and swallow it it's a spirit pain reliever I'm not saying you are sick and they gave you in the hospital God is visiting addictions this night quickly come don't sit back and say I'm all right allow God set you free let them come look at this pain I don't know what it is but I hear my spirit pain reliever whether you are sick whether you are fine the urge will hook you and you have to go and get it if you you can prefer to take it than to eat food it must go right now that's why God put this meeting to help people there's one of you fire is coming on you now after that fire comes on you then I'll pray for the rest that's the instruction God is giving me one of you fire literal fire is coming upon you from heaven as I lay my hands upon you that addiction breaks right now stretch your hands and pray for them don't feel embarrassed broken now broken now broken now in the name of Jesus addiction broken now broken now by the power of the Holy Ghost broken now broken right now by the power of the Holy Ghost broken now broken now if you have for prayers just move them forward broken now in the name of Jesus broken now in the name of Jesus broken now in the name of Jesus it's broken now in the name of Jesus broken in the name of Jesus place your hand on your stomach God is not only setting you free he's setting you free from something else let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ addiction broken now addiction broken now by the power of the Holy Ghost addiction is broken now in the name of Jesus Christ broken now hold my hands let her go in the name of Jesus Christ there is a spirit that wants to destroy your life I command now there's no hiding place for you by the power of the Holy Spirit you must be set free you are standing in for somebody no problem in the name of Jesus Christ supernatural freedom hallelujah praise the Lord now Praise the Lord. Please accept you are nursing a child or doing something. Let's all rise. Those outside, they are still praying for you. No problem. All other people, please stand up. Rise up. I want us to pray. If you are yet to submit your prayer request, please do it quickly. The Bible says, Unto him that answers prayers shall all flesh come. In one minute, God can turn your life around. everyone stretch your hands here and pray I'm going to lay hands on the request pray passionately from the depth of your heart Lord I will not have to write this again pray I've written it the Bible says after two days please if there are still people coming bring it quickly it says after two days he will revive us and on the third day he will raise us up online here please pray I'm laying my hands on this request and we're asking the God of heaven visit men and women are you praying now pray in the next one minute I'd like you to pray blast in tongues and say Lord this is the last of the prayer request that I'm having to write concerning this issue hallelujah agree with me with a loud amen in the name of Jesus Christ 
I decree and I declare over every request gathered from this nation and from the nations of the earth online and here in our local environment Jesus I present to you impossible situations according to men and I ask you turn it around now turn it around now turn it around now let every breakthrough request here be turned into a testimony now every case here said by men to be impossible we we collide that case with the power of god and we produce testimonies now whoever must die for this prayer to be answered dies now whoever must live for this prayer to be answered lives now whoever must rise for this prayer to be answered rises now whoever must go down for this prayer to be answered goes down now whoever must hear God for this prayer to be answered hears God now father I pray in the name of Jesus may your people not have to write this again agree with me may your people not have to write this again Lord I pray that before miracle service April let every request here be turned into a testimony May the fire and the anointing of the Holy Ghost that makes all the difference let it rest on this request the same way fire fell from heaven to consume the sacrifice of Elijah may fire fall on this now it has been prayed for you will not write it again it has been prayed for you will not write it again in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please lift up your hands everyone hallelujah listen we're in a very strange season of the manifestation first of the spirit of revelation listen carefully there is a very spectacular outpouring God wants to upgrade the work of his people to access the mysteries of the kingdom not just to know him God wants to equip us with mysteries are we together number two there is a strange outpouring of the supernatural power of God for performance for performance not just that you had God and it never happens not just that you speak and it never happens number three this is personal to us as a family of faith God has declared that is a year of triumph I want you to believe this word oh believe it otherwise you will sit down and you will watch people rise from nothing and then you will keep clapping I'd like you to insist we still have a few minutes for this meeting to be done tonight insist that if you have never stood upon this altar to testify make up your mind and say no God I must stand before your people are you hearing what I'm saying as I speak over your life now among the many things I want to speak right now I want to activate upon your life the grace and the unction for performance many of you may not know what this anointing is listen carefully lift your hands he said who has ever heard that a city was built in one day but as soon as Zion travels 
there is a grace that is coming upon the people of god hear me for performance he said blessed is she that believes for unto her not unto them mm -mm, mm -mm. this is not a corporate thing unto her there shall be there are many things god has said that has not come to pass there is a grace that engenders performance i prophesy to you now in the name of the lord god who called me and sent me may that unction that will make results appear speedily let it come upon you like fire now let it come upon you like fire now receive it now is yours receive it now is yours receive it now is yours performance 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 shake it la bata la prete get the soto ropa shiata grace for performance everything hanging in the realm of the spirit that is already your portion released by god i decree within the next 30 days it appears physically now i prophesy the spirit of the lord is upon me i speak within the next 30 days it manifests in the name of jesus whatever has slowed down your pace in life so that you are not moving at the pace designed by god i put fire upon your feet and i command speed now i put fire upon your feet i command strange speed strange speed strange speed anything that has not yet worked in your life i don't know why but i'm prophesying i'm speaking to it start working now many of you don't understand what i'm doing to you start working now i don't know what projects you are currently on that has refused to produce i force it to bear fruit now I force it to bear fruit now. Hear me. The Lord spoke to my spirit and told me that the month of April for Koinonia, you may not believe it, but for Koinonia and everyone connected to this grace, the Lord said we will see a strange dimension of wealth and manifestation write this down brothers and sisters is the word of the lord i think i was telling you yesterday that the lord told me this you will see people that know nothing about money rise in a way that they themselves are asking what happened listen except the lord has not sent me i declare you must be part of the testifiers don't say i'm too small receive it don't be foolish in the name of jesus you must be a participant listen i tell you brothers and sisters please write this down you will see a strange rising rising write this down you will say i said it nothing to some i mean mysteriously people will have to ask what is happening it is a grace there is a grace that makes it happen i'm not talking of business i'm talking about the suffering word of god upon the life of a man may it be your portion in the name of jesus i decree upon you the kind of favor 
that will make even your enemies to say there is God in your life I release that dimension of favor now listen you can't rise in this kingdom without the favor of God you will struggle for nothing please hear me I prophesy it again whoever is lacking favor on his life I decree from this night carry favor inside outside everywhere online carry favor let me prophesy over finances whatever makes money run away from you don't say I'm talking about money you need it for what is coming in ahead whatever makes finances run from you whatever dug a hole in your life that makes you suffer in misery and penury I turn it around now I turn it around now I pray for every student here the kind of results you have never seen I release it to you now I release it by the spirit I release it from the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ anyone due for promotion here or anyone's family member rightfully due for promotion and either because of religious sentiments or because of ethno tribal sentiments they have trampled upon you I decree and declare may the angel of God responsible for lifting visit your destiny and ensure that your promotion must manifest I pray for your loved ones. I pray for you. Whoever is called jobless here, yeah, before next miracle service, get something doing now. I prophesy it again. Whoever is called jobless before next miracle service, I don't know how it will happen, but get a good job. There are people here trusting God for direction. Very clear direction for the next level of their lives. Could be maritally, could be geographic location, whatever it is. Hear God in this season like never before. Hear God in this season like never before. Lift your hands. I release upon you the grace for supernatural miracles receive it right now receive it right now saboto so bring it here receive it right now from tonight i declare whoever you speak over and command their destinies to open may my god honor it i said may my god honor it Whoever fights you goes down immediately. Whoever fights you goes down immediately. Hear me? Whoever mocks your passion for God goes down immediately. Whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise, may his prayer be answered. Whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise in Koinonia tonight, may their prayers be answered. Every embargo of bad luck upon your face that makes your helpers look at you and turn aside, 
I tear that fail completely in the name of Jesus favor like never before testimonies like never before koinonia is the place of the anointing koinonia is the place of unction i pray for you a new a fresh grace and anointing let it rest upon you like the dew of heaven begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit i'm praying it again begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit begin to flow effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit the mantle of honor that god has put upon my life god has put upon this ministry you are part of this vision you are under this grace there's no reason why you should not walk in your life i command it to start speaking now no more dishonor in your life no more dishonor in your life hear me for those who have been trying certain things for a long time whether it's exams whether it's admission whatever you have been doing again business i don't care i don't know where the embargo came from but i break it right now from today any man that looks upon you may god cause them to bless you whatever has killed your prayer life this night I release upon you the spirit of prayer and supplication listen see let me tell you something don't ever let people there are people who are under such passion for new things the system of the kingdom is dynamic but the foundations of the things that make men grow are the same prayer the word corporate fellowship obedience if you leave any of these things and you say you are looking for power or looking for anointing is a joke you will never find it one more time i restore your prayer life in the name of jesus christ i don't know what killed your passion for the word your passion for bible study your passion for devotion your passion for the things of god but i command the restoration this night I don't know what took away your passion for the house of God but in the name of Jesus may a love for the house of God like never before come upon you in the name of Jesus the grace God released to bring the word triumph to come to pass in this ministry may that grace speak over you I speak over your life it is your year of triumph therefore whatever has mocked God in your life I command that in as you enter April from tomorrow you triumph over it hallelujah as you enter April it will not be April full it will be April wise it will be April breakthrough it will be April miracles it will be April speed. Agree with me again. I'm praying with you. Between now and miracle service April, please hear me. Results together with tears in your eyes for joy, you will return with them. Results together with tears of joy in your eyes. Wave your hands and give Jesus all the praise. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Thank you, Lord, for performance. Thank you, Lord, for performance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, 
We believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.